Oh, damn it. And, and like Silent Hill, man, like we haven't gotten a new Silent Hill game. We haven't gotten a proper Silent Hill game in well over a decade. Yeah. Uh, PT doesn't count. No. <laughs> I also I also don't understand why everyone sucks that fucking five to ten minutes. You walk in circles for five minutes, and every time you come back to the to the same area, things get a little bit scarier. So it's just like yeah, there's a new butthead yeah. man with each cycle. Yeah, like, you're not you're not building you're not building tension. You just didn't bother to, to script an entire like it's just. I don't know. I thought it was tense and I thought it was well lit. I think that was like what was so I think that's what visage visage. I'm still confused on that one. How you say it? Uh, visage visage. OK, with two Z's in the middle. Uh, I think that's what it does so well is <laughs> it, like it, it, it could be it could be visage if you vis- want visage. visage. Let's go with that. Um, the lighting in it is just super good. I mean, it's really fucking dark, but like, I don't know. It's just very creepy. It has a creepy aesthetic. Visage. 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 That, that, that game actually, like, now that it actually works, it's not bad. It's it's <laughs> really good. Yeah. I remember, like, I had, like, trying to play through it. I couldn't run at all. I couldn't run ever. Like, I, the run button just didn't work for me. Well, it uh, doesn't work even when it's working as intended. It's, like, called the sprint <laughs> button, but you just take, like, an extra quarter of a step. It's, like, ridiculous. <laughs> There's, like, no function to it whatsoever. Okay. They didn't tell you how much stamina your character has when trying to sprint. <laughs> Yeah, you well, wait, wait, what, what you can't say is that your character's actually pulling an entire dialysis machine behind him, <laughs> which is why Ooh, harsh reality. He has a cute kidney <laughs> yeah. injury <sighs> and no health insurance. Yeah, should have finished college <laughs> instead of drinking your way to to flunking, huh, bud? <laughs> That's another one of those games that like starts off with a shock and all. Like your character starts off by killing a bunch of like <laughs> it, like it's it, potential like a, maybe maybe your wife and your children, or also just maybe random people. <laughs> it kind of pulls that that like beast within, but like also you don't have any emotional attachments. You're like, yeah, all right, cool. Like, <laughs> I'm the murderer. I got it. Yeah, <laughs> this is my punishment. This whole game is my punishment for my sins. I got it. Yeah, w- way to put the feather in the cap in the first fucking scene. Yeah, yeah, you, you know it pretty yeah. much right out of the gate. Like, all right, it was me, right? I'm one of the ghosts yeah. in here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm being chased by it's, it's 13 ghosts and I'm Matthew Lillard. And I'm not I mean? spoiling like, anything. <laughs> I never beat. I only beat the first chapter. I just know that's the ending of that game. Oh, oh yeah. Well, like I've only beaten the first two chapters. And I'm convinced 100 percent that that's that's how it ends. Yeah. What if I should finish that game so we can confirm it? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> what if I could just do some Google Foo right now and tell nah, you? Nah, 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 nah. That's not the cool way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it is the cool way. Free golf. <laughs> oh god oh man oh god yeah uh, um, i can't wait to talk about that shit <laughs> me neither <laughs> me neither i bought a red bull because i am so sleepy i'm really sleepy too I, yeah. so I just tired drank a monster. Dude, i don't get it <laughs> you We're realize this, it. this is our last pod of sober january right like next time we next time we all gather together i'm gonna be blackout drunk from the second i was, I was gonna say gonna should we have just, one more yeah. no i'm pretty sure we have one more don't we wait it's the 25th Oh shit! Yeah, it would be the thirty first. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> well, I mean, twenty four hours. Really. I am so sick of being sober. It's fucking <laughs> yeah, terrible. It really sucks. It's awful. <laughs> sober January is a fucking nightmare. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I mean, like if we would have done it in October, you know, like it, it might have been okay. Talk about but... starting off twenty twenty one the harshest way yeah. possible too. Like twenty twenty was super shit, but we were drunk for most of it, right? Let's be honest with ourselves. Yeah, we yeah. come into twenty twenty one. Things aren't better. It's just a new calendar year, yeah. but yeah. we're sober as fucking dealing with all of it. Yeah. yeah. Listeners, don't try to do anything to improve yourself whatsoever. Just keep <laughs> drinking. If heroin's your thing, keep doing heroin. Why? No, why no, no, oh, no, 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 sorry. no, 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 what's it, what's it, what, what, what I've learned from sober January is that baby steps are important. Like, right. Uh, do less heroin like, first. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe methadone or suboxone. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, no, no, no. But like, but like, Maybe just dialing back drinking would have been the appropriate response. Like, you know, like only only eat fast food once a week or once every two weeks. Right. Or, you know, may, maybe maybe it, the whole keto thing is destroying my entire like I, I, I am tired all the time. It's got to be keto. It's got to be. 
Let's switch to a balanced diet, baby boy. Well, I, I missed I out it. on the keto thing, but d- under my doctor's orders, which I get a scan on Thursday, which if that turns out okay, I, I like have to go back on keto. So I'm going to be right oh, really? back in the dredges with you. Uh, but I, I, I at least got to eat basically whatever I wanted this month. But I did not have one drop of alcohol in the month of January. I'm very proud of you. I did. I cheated. Oh, yeah. Start, yeah. You're an asshole. It was like five days in or something. <laughs> like, yeah. not even. It yeah, was yeah. like two. It was like, like my, January. My wife bought me beer. Fuck you guys. <laughs> well, she did. You were like, I mean, oh, and what I am could've... I supposed to do? Now, oh. yeah, well, not, exactly. Not, what am I supposed to do? Have self control and just watch this yeah, be a exactly. city ever? <laughs> you want to hear a piece of shit I am? And, and in my brain, I'm like, well, if they're in the fridge, I'm going to drink them. <laughs> like, I'm, there's going to be a night where I'm like, it's like, a, it's like 10, 11 o'clock at night. I'm going to be playing WoW or something. I'm going to be like, I'm just, gonna, I just, I just, I'm just gonna crack one. So I was like, I just gonna get him out of the fucking house. <laughs> now I feel you. Like on on New Year's Eve, I was like, I have to drink everything I have in here, <laughs> or like I'm gonna drink, right? And so like, it's like subsequently making it way worse. Yeah. Before it- I got so fucked up that night that like I thought I drank everything, and like three days later, Veronica's like, "You have one bottle of soju left," and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna drink it now." And I just keep forgetting about it, which is the only reason I haven't really cracked this month. But uh, you know, here we are. We're in the home stretch. So how, how would you describe soju? Uh, cheap. <laughs> and it gets you drunk. <laughs> that's, that's how is I would it, describe it. Is it soju. like a rice wine? What is, it's Korean spirit, uh, right? Yeah, it's I think it's a rice spirit. Yeah, it's kind of like sake, but it doesn't have that like sugary fucking like ugh, that like blast you in the face. It tastes yeah. more like an alcohol, so it's you, good. You can to take like feel your sinuses drying out with every sip of sake. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like the hangover happens before you even go to sleep because you're just you're like you're like SpongeBob when he goes into Sandy's. Yeah, dome, you're and like, he's just like we ringed you. I out. never watched that yeah, awful yeah. show, and I and I, I oh, won't. I'm, I'm, no, it's terrible. It's annoying. Oh, t- he he you know just what? screams you know the whole time. How do you feel? How do you feel about the memes though? Terrible. I, I can't relate to them. You're wrong. You're fucking wrong. <laughs> I'm you're like, so, this is like my Ebenezer thing. Like I just never got into SpongeBob. Bah humbug. Well, tell you revisit my three. Old shit. Tell you revisit my three SpongeBob memes, and by that I mean <laughs> when we're done the podcast, while you're trying to have sex or enjoy a TV show or eat, I would have text you sporadically throughout the night. My favorite SpongeBob memes. I thought you were gonna go darker and go like that, like the dead creator of SpongeBob was gonna come <laughs> visit me. Which uh, I didn't know. He, I didn't know he was dead. Oh, he's all the way. Dead. I don't even know who created SpongeBob. Some nope. Why would you want to? <laughs> Some dead guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's dead. I, mean, I, don't know who created, I don't know who created Hey Arnold or the Angry Beavers either. Like, yeah, those are great There's, shows, it, though. You're, you're the Wizard Nobody of Oz. Sounds like this ah, on those shows, so they're ah! actually good. <laughs> there you, go. you do it better than I do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just gotta, gotta get in there and right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's horrifying. There, there was one. Uh, there was one little side joke in SpongeBob that no one ever brought up when talking about that show that just solidified it in my head as being worthy of my time and i was uh they're out in the wilderness of the ocean him and patrick and they're like oh we're so cold let's make a fire and they start a fire (laughs) and then like three seconds in you know what i'm gonna say and like three seconds in spongebob goes wait How's there fire underwater? And it just goes out. <laughs> Everybody talks about that. What are you talking about, you maniac? This is what, what? This is what I mean. Everybody that's a SpongeBob fan thinks it's this super unique, interesting thing about them. I didn't Everybody say any of that. Likes SpongeBob, except for you. And I bet you, yeah. I bet you think that makes you unique. I, I don't. I don't think that. I really don't. I don't think it makes me a better person. But I'm, I'm very happy to tell you that I don't you, like it. You old ass Krampus monster. <laughs> Just gnarled fangs hating on everything. Yeah, you're going to be visited by three ghosts. The first of which will, it may be the Flying Dutchman. It could be Mrs. Puff. You know Mrs. Puff. Yeah. I mean, they're all dead now, right? The creator's dead. They're all, they're all dead. The, the, all those the, the creations all die too. too? I mean, well, are they still making new episodes? I have no idea. But also, like, that show was on the air for 20 years. Like, how long do you think a puffer fish lives? They're all fucking dead. <laughs> like, like, the circle of life, like, on the bottom, like, like the, the, the bikini bottom, right? Like, the circle of life somehow is on hold is on pause there while the show's going on but you know the second the camera's cut it's like dog eat dog like the shark <laughs> is just devouring mrs puff i think that's exactly i that. thought yeah, that yeah. you meant that, that it was like that like they were all stuck in like time stasis but anytime an episode wasn't airing they like caught up with aging they just rapidly like see wrinkles appearing in their hands 
No, I, I like be Scott's horrifying. idea better because basically, the, like, we don't know what depth they're at, but the squirrel would just like crumple under yeah, the weight of the sea. They have to get a new squirrel every time and shove it into a little episode space. of SpongeBob. <laughs> All right, cut. We're like her dome's just decompressing. <laughs> she's, yeah. she's liquefied in a tiny little. <laughs> it's like a little blood cube. From, yeah, it, lo- it, lo- uh, it looks from like a health, looks like a health potion from <laughs> Ocarina of Time. Oh, you're getting better at that. You're practicing. Yeah, yeah. I see. <laughs> Deja vu. Uh, it's still not completely natural because there's a little pause where you're like, yeah. oh, wait, 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 wait. I get it. Uh, I okay. thought that blood was just falling out of your nose when you took a sip of whatever you're drinking. I was like, oh my god. I, I, I yeah, had a moment. P- pronouncing ocarina the correct way causes me to have <laughs> ferocious gave you nose a brain tumor immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's like it's like that that scene in uh, the butterfly effect where like he relearns everything that's happened to him. <laughs> you know, because like like he's experienced a whole different life now. It's like, well, I have to I have to re- I have to really just ingrain this pronunciation that I've had wrong for the entirety of my entire life, and it's just it's just rewiring my entire uh, right. It gave you that. a tumor yeah. behind your eye for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right just like this podcast does and speaking of that <laughs> welcome to the cynical nerd uh it's it's we i don't know we went for a while and i think a lot of that was hilarious that was a you. long walk to, to get that, to give me a tumor basically <laughs> you could say that, that was, was, a, you could say that was a walk to remember tumor. yeah <laughs> <laughs> was it a, a walk to remember <laughs> oh my god what what episode are we on this is episode 17, 17. holy shit holy shit Yo. we're almost legal boys yeah Next episode, y'all can come fuck us. <laughs> yeah. While one of us, one of us is going to be the cuck and watch. Yeah. Next episode, we can post videos of us jerking off online. That We're going to make an yeah. OnlyFans next week. Is what uh, yes. Next yeah. week has to be the OnlyFans. This yeah. is not for the, the uh, listening audience. This is for us because we're old and forgetful. Remember to think about names as we go. Uh, hi, my name is Chris. I'm your host for the episode. Joined with me, as always, is Derek and Scott. <laughs> Derek, how you doing? I'm doing good. I- I'd be a lot better if uh, anybody recognized Scaric. my joke uh, last night where I called you Chris till Pepsi. Nobody acknowledged <laughs> it, and I was a little upset I about saw it. it and chuckled. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I didn't respond, though. I'm very sorry. I didn't, sorry I didn't give you the uh, adulation you, you wanted. Right. That's okay. Other than that, I'm doing great. I think the, awesome. the problem is that you set the bar so high, Derek, that when you have one like that, it's just not it's not the, the very top of the mountain. Right. That right. I know you're capable of. I don't want to encur- I don't want to encourage that kind of behavior. because I know you're better than that. <laughs> I also I, I maybe it's because I live oh, in my own world Pepsi and I'm pretty good. I'm, it is pretty good. <laughs> maybe it's because I'm in my own world and live up my own ass. But I, I only recall you making all these nicknames for me recently. It feels like a lot of Chris nicknames like Chrysanthemum, Chrysanthemum, uh, Crystal, yeah. Crystal Pepsi, Crystal Pepsi, Chrysalis. It's, there's just they keep coming out. Yeah, there's they're, not they're a whole all, lot. Like gold. there's not as many as you'd think. You, you, like you have to start thinking about it, or you're going to start repeating. You know, yeah, you can't have that. I was out. I, as soon as I said uh, Chris Anthem, I was like, shit, I forget. Yeah, you'd think there'd the be more, things. but <laughs> really, there's not. Uh, Scott, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I like your background. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, it's very sexy. Uh, we, I'm excited. We have a lot of Resident Evil news to talk about today. Um, mm-hmm. We do. We, there's now there is now stiff and I mean stiff rock hard rigid <laughs> stiff competition between uh mommy dompire right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or yeah. sorry mommy mommy milkers dompire oh. and and uh man blood we have to give we have to give skinny fly lady a nickname the one who materializes out of bugs and wants to bleed you dry isn't that oh, like a group okay. of them I thought that was like a group of them there there is I mean they are like a, an enemy type but there's one that they show like. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I've yeah, just been he, calling like, them some... Mistress Milk and the Murder Mommies. <laughs> okay, <that's, laughs> that that may be a title around the gate. Holy shit! <laughs> Say it again, Milk. Uh, that's Mistress Mil- Milk and the Murder Mommies. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the grunge band opener to our ska band that we made last week. Oh yeah, yeah. That's- <laughs> like they they all come out in like BDSM gear. Yeah. They have a you smaller know, following, get- but they're more hardcore by a lot. Yeah, like, they're, they're wearing like see-through uh, fishnets with like duct tape over their nipples. It's, yeah, they're it's, like it's the, trashy, uh, but in all the ways you want it to be. <clears throat> Shit, what was the name of the super gross guy on stage at the HR? Uh, Gigi Allen, not Gigi Allen. I was just say HR Geiger. I was like, that's not even a little bit. <laughs> no. <who> that is <laughs> no. Although I would love to watch HR Geiger rub shit all over his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, would you though? <laughs> I mean, not for me, but I like fuck that guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, we're all very tired, boys. Here, 
Uh, we have. I, we apologize. It's going up a day late. It's 100 <laughs> uh, percent Derek and I's fault. Scott was trying to power through it like the. Oh my god! <laughs> man, he looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> It's not good. Yeah. I feel like I've seen him in movies. Yeah, like Star Wars, Jabba the Hut, 100%. <laughs> no, no, but he was he was in some stuff, wasn't he? I have no idea. Your nightmares. <laughs> and, oh, and he's a, night- he was he was in Dune. He was in the OG Dune. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. I felt like that was appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I got to keep us on track. We're all very That's tired this week. Uh it, we're late tonight because of Derek and I are big fat baby boys. Mm-hmm. Scott was going to do it. I could tell he was he was trying to he was flexing on us. He was like, "Well, I'm Scott. I was I was going to do it if you guys were going to do it, but I guess you guys want to be bitches about it." Um true. That, we have, those are my, those are my guess exact you guys better be in bed early tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually 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 drove to their houses and left them uh little saucers of warm milk, not cups, but saucers so they could eat out of them with their tongues like the pussies they are. <laughs> And thank you, because I forgot to make something for, to eat on the way out the door this morning. It was very helpful. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, we have two trailers to start off with out the gate today. We have a bunch of game news in between, and then we have some uh, Resident Evil news to wrap up Week in Review, and then we have two main topics. I'm actually glad we pushed this today, because uh, Scott had Derek and I watch a film mm-hmm. that will never leave my mind hey, called... Or, or your heart. Heart or mine. Or, or my heart, <laughs> called Psycho Gorman, which just came out uh, recently. And we have WandaVision Episode 3 to talk about, which I'm also excited to talk about. So, right out the gate, we'll blast through these trailers. There's a, a CW Superman and Lois show. We've talked about it. We've collectively talked about how we don't care about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We've co- we've collectively made fun of the guy playing Superman. Yeah. Um, not enough, though, I don't think. Not, not enough. <laughs> not enough. We really fill an episode just with that. Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> So the the show com- is coming out. Uh, actually, it came out Tuesday. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Came out. Uh, comes out next month. Tuesday, uh, Tuesday February twenty third. <laughs> I'm stumbling over <laughs> fucking everything. Uh, Superman and Lois coming out on the CW, and they're gonna have a two hour premiere. And they had the trailer released, and I honestly only put it in the doc because the trailer was not as bad as I expected. And I was curious to see how you guys thought about it. And I want hmm Scott to go first. How do you feel about it? I feel like the entire two hours should just be them figuring out how to tweeze his fucking eyebrows with the most obnoxious, <laughs> horrific thing I've ever... Like, I understand the Kryptonian eyebrows probably are, like, just... They mangle every pair of tweezers they put up to his forehead. I get it. But... Jesus fucking... Uh, he's the he's the homeliest s- Superman I've ever seen. Granted, I'm the Omno Superman, but he looks like... He looks like the Doodle Bob equivalent of, he- of, of Henry Cavill. Like, he's fucking horrible to look at. I couldn't get uh, past he's it. He's cross eyed the wrong showed... way. Like normally, the cross eyes go in, but his kind of go out a little bit. It's really like they do. He's in sixteen by nine or something. It's kind of strange. <laughs> <laughs> Very wide set eyeballs. He, we uh, now that we're talking, we're just shaming him for his fucking appearance. Uh, fun fact about Superman in the comics: had to actually shave with a mirror using laser vision because it's the only way that he could cut his own hair. Now that you know that, and you're dumber for it. What did you think about the actual trailer besides uh, making fun of <laughs> the guy playing Superman? Uh, I mean, that's really all I got. I don't give a shit at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Like, I understand what they're, they're, he's like, oh, my bad dad. Like, they're trying to show him, like, they're trying to show the, the, the Clark Kent side of him, like, the realization that eventually he settles down with Lois and they have a family. I don't care about any of that. If, if, no? if, the, if the person who's playing Superman isn't compelling, I'm not going to give a fuck about the narrative. And this guy, I can't, I can't get past anything about his like he just oh god I don't know, yeah, yeah, it's like, let's focus on the human side of superman it's like do you mean the boring side like i don't want to know about him at all not that superman is any more interesting but yeah plus anything with Super- the cw verse immediately i'm not interested in, and i'll keep calling it that as long as it gives chris like that weird inward <laughs> antigasm that it gives him every time i say cw verse um, yeah so the, what, what is the what is the male equivalent of a of a Mary Sue? Because that's exactly what Superman is. <laughs> I think it's a Superman. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a uh, Mark. I don't I don't know. I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> we can just call we can just call we can just call it a Clark Kent, right? Yeah, yeah. We can just call we could just call it a Clark Kent. Yeah. Uh, All right. I feel like Superman's like one of the one of those characters that is only compelling when he has like a villain that like that makes him compelling. Something can actually beat his ass. Um, and the thing is, like, I saw Doom Guy in this trailer, it looked like. I don't know what the fucking... Oh, that's it. true. Exactly like the Doom Slayer. Yeah, he, exactly. looks like, he, he looked like Doom Slayer to me. Uh, Doom Guy. 
Uh, I mean, I don't know what's going on. It looks like maybe some kind of kryptonite power suit. But but again, like I don't. Yeah. I don't. I can't. I can't bring myself to get emotionally invested in anything that's on the CW. I just can't fucking do it. Yeah, I'll admit that it does look better than I would have expected it to. But like, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna watch it. I mean, it's it's. I I know what it's gonna be. It's the same thing with the Flash. Those trailers looked interesting enough that I went like, oh, yeah, okay. it's gonna be a soap opera. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, just we, not. That. That's just not. I don't know. But I'll give that I, to you. It it was a little more well done than I would have expected. Yeah, like I was saying, like literally the only reason I put it in here is because I. I've been shitting on this with you guys, despite my love of DC, uh, because it, you know, it just, I, I don't know, meh, doesn't need to happen, doesn't need to exist. Uh, it's weird that they're doing it. It's weird that they're doing it with this guy. Um, what, as, it, it, even though the suit looks better, it looks oddly super bulky on him mm. now, as opposed to like thinner. There's a shot of him in space. And it looks like there's like another suit on underneath of this suit. Like it's really fucking kind of weird. Because he's a tiny little bird man. Like he doesn't he doesn't <laughs> belong in that suit in any way, shape, or form. I'm sorry. Like I hate to get caught up on the physicality, but uh Henry Cavill, like for the role, he gained weight. He was a, he's a fucking like a solid wall of man. And you can't like you can't be the Superman that follows that. Yeah, and, yeah and, he is. And not he's be big at least at least half as handsome as as Henry is. Like Hen like Henry is an absolutely <laughs> Adonis of a man. And that did <laughs> but but also but also like in the trailer like I don't know man I just want to say something real quick yeah I'd suck Henry Cavill's dick I would <laughs> I would I would like if he came in here now I would do it um, did it. you do it on camera while me and, me and Chris who did yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah cheer me I'm gonna need some help I'm sure he's got a big old beef in there so I'm gonna need some encouragement. <laughs> Uh, would you spit or swallow? That's really the important question. No, no, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't know. I am actually because of this trailer going to watch at least the opening. And I'll tell you why for the uh, 30 Tell seconds us. I want to spend on this remaining. It's because um, it, we know everything we need to know about Superman. He's been around for fucking ever. He's the oldest superhero. Uh, he's only interesting in very certain situations. I actually in complete opposition to Scott's uh, statement earlier, I think he's completely disinteresting when he fights someone physically because we know Superman's always going to win or at least is super strong and always going to go toe-to-toe with him. Mm -hmm. That's boring to me. I, he needs psychological villains, uh, people to fuck with those he loves, people to make him make tough decisions. Like Some of the best moments in comics for people who actually know how to write for the Jesus problem that is Superman is when they make him realize that he can't save everybody all the time. Like Those are the most compelling moments for him. I didn't mean to infer that it had to be like a giant brute fest. What, what I meant is like when he has, <laughs> I, what I said was Superman's compelling Just when he has a, a villain that, makes, it that out. makes him compelling. So yeah. I mean, like whether it be psychologically or like physical combat, whether it be the death of Superman storyline, which like always gets undone so quickly that it has no emotional weight in the first place. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's just, there's, there's a very, it's very difficult to make him interesting at all because he's, right. he's, got, he's got the fucking Mary Sue going on. Well, yeah, Clark he's got the fuck can't go yeah. on. Yeah, we'll go, I think we're coining that term for sure. Um, uh, but the, yeah, so I, I, I think, you know, it's going to be psychological stuff. And there's an interesting angle here because uh, him having kids with Lois, obviously it's been explored in the comic books and they're actually there's stories out there right now where that's happening. But in this, it looks like his kids don't know he's Superman just yet, um, which is interesting. I don't know if their powers haven't manifest, whatever the fucking MacGuffin plot device is where they don't fucking know somehow uh, like, you know, he hasn't seen Superman's face on the news and been like, oh, it's dad without glasses. Like, you know, I, <laughs> that's, that's, that's just so, that's, that's part that's of so makes, stupid. That's part of what makes Superman the dumbest hero ever, though. Yeah, like, I, I agree. Everybody, I every, everybody who's friends with Clark Kent is nearsighted. That's the only way it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he could have um, just like, like gone slack jawed or something while he's Clark, you know, like do something <laughs> real dumb, but just glasses. He could have went. He could just go full simple Jack when he's dying. <laughs> 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 Fucking I mean, Tyler, stained over Tyler, Tyler Oakland or whatever the fuck his name is kind of looks like he's full full Jack in this trailer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I look, we know it's going to be a soap opera because it's CW. We know that the effects are going to be subpar sci-fi special effects. I just, the human element of him having a family and his, the, I, I don't know, I think it could be interesting and it's enough to make me at least watch the premiere and go from there. And I'm sure even if it is decent, I'll never watch more of it than I did the flash, which was like the first season and a half. And then I'll be like, yeah, they're just going to do the same thing, but worse and worse incarnations of that. And I never need to see it again. Um, that being said, our second trailer, 
I don't know how either of you feel about this, and I have thoughts. Uh, the second trailer we're talking about is Godzilla vs. Kong. That trailer uh, just dropped over uh, the weekend. Yesterday. Yeah, it dropped yesterday. Um, this movie is going to be in theaters and streaming exclusively. Thank you, uh, HBO Max gods. Shillin over here. Shill Uh March 26th. So we have just over two months. And um, it's a thing. I'm, a, I'm not going to go first. Derek, how did you feel about the Godzilla versus? I, I, I think that let me just say this. And I mean this sincerely. I think it's interesting. We talk about how there are themes in cinema that tend to last sometimes 10 years. Sometimes when you have like Westerns and superhero, you're talking 20 plus years. And it's interesting to see Godzilla, which comes from obviously the era of the, you know, the big monster feature uh, sort of like make this comeback during another uh, during the superhero era. It's almost like, oh, that's weird. We're over that. So but it is interesting to see it do kind of as well as it does that they've made. What is this? The third one now, I think, of this iteration. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So that being said, it is cool to see sort of. You know, no pun intended, but someone take on that Titan and actually kind of be able to stay oh. in the ring. Um, you better have intended that pun. That was a quality pun. Uh, that being said, this looks like it was made by fucking Michael Bay. I don't know what to say about this. That was the worst trailer in the world. There was like that that song that doesn't know if it's rap yes. or rock. Oh, yes. It was so stupid. It was so uh, sorry. It was uh, the knockoff Limp Biscuit soundtrack that they requisitioned for this trailer. That's exactly <laughs> Let's what do it something was. like 1999 Biscuit for this trailer. Uh, yeah. Someone said yeah to that. Um, yeah, I really don't know what else to say. <laughs> yeah, Fred Durst. Yeah. <laughs> Come on! Yeah! <laughs> Fucking monkeys punching lizards! Level food stamps! Yeah, what? <laughs> Fucking battleship! I really hope <laughs> he is on, I really hope he is surviving on food stamps, that piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fred you, Durst you, you is know. cultural appropriation personified. I fucking hate him. Oh my yeah, God. but you know that he uses his EBT card to buy red baseball caps. Yeah. Instead of the food he needs for his family because right. he's a giant bag of shit. He exchanges his EBT. Nobody lets Fred Durst come in him or come in them. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Well, they did once, but just once. Yeah. Does he have a family? I wonder really? if Fred Durst does come in him, though. You ever think about that? <laughs> you, you, you pose an I, interesting thought. <laughs> uh, do me one favor, Scott. Tell me how you felt about the film, and I'll tell you if Fred Durst has kids. Okay, or the uh, the trailer. This is a fair trade. Um, I'm <laughs> I'm actually excited for it because okay. uh, the, these are movies that are kind of like out of time. Like like you were saying, like the Matthew Broderick one. They they try to make it like a drama, and nobody gives it like and, and even even the one where they had uh, uh Bri- Brian Cranston, right? Yeah, that yeah, that they, was they, like the tra- first one of this trilogy. Yeah, and and they had the they had eleven in one. Like they they keep trying to make these movies like dramas. They try, keep trying to give it emotional weight, and that doesn't work. That's like Godzilla was always just about the fights. It was always it was always about just these two, like about the about the puppetry, about the uh the like the the art of building these models and having these incredible costumes. Even back like back in like the you know the fifties and and the I think maybe even the late forties when these movies were coming out. It was what it was what it was all about. It just needs to be a big dumb action popcorn movie it should michael bay should be directing these these should be the only movies he should be trusted to direct because it doesn't need anything besides action set pieces that's all it needs to be action set piece naval officer on a giant on a giant ship out at sea at safe distance away calculating who's gonna win back to the fucking fight scene you know jets coming in trying to bomb the, the bad one whoever the bad one is in this one uh getting swatted out of the air back to the fight sequence it doesn't need like the simplicity of those old movies is what makes them hold up i think because like I, uh, I did you watch, watch those? I'm just curious. Did you watch the oh, old yeah, Godzilla? Yeah. Remember the Mothra I mean, one where it's like two hours of those <laughs> shamans trying to wake up Mothra and the whole time you're like, what the fuck? And then it's like 20 minutes <laughs> of Godzilla and Mothra duking it out. And it was like, fuck yeah. But it took way I've too long that, to but, get there. But I, I watched a bunch of old ones that Mystery Science Theater made fun of like way back in the day. Right. But yeah. then because of that, I found that I actually like I found myself like getting annoyed that they were talking over it. And I actually liked them a little bit. Uh, and I... I I watched it, and that like that's one of the things that I loved about like the Pacific Rim movies. They kind of like recaptured that, but they they did find a way to actually make you care about the people in the suits, and like they that's one of the few movies I think really is underrated. Like is Pacific Rim. I know you're you're smirking at me a little bit. They found a, great, a way great... to make you care about the people in the suits. I'm not gonna let you live that down. Please continue. It's I mean it's true though. Like they like they had like Pacific Rim is one of the few movies, few giant monster movies where the, the subplots involving people don't feel like a waste of screen time to me. 
Can you name so I, them? Can you name uh, three of those characters? Them, those people in the suits? No, yeah, I've, seen, just, I've seen the movie once or twice, like <laughs> fucking five years ago when it came out, or six years ago. I did Wait, see no, the 2008. first one. Two thousand eight. Yeah, it was good. It was good, man. Well, that was uh, that was um, Guillermo del Toro, Ron Perlman, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's a great yeah. director, I, but I thought they were dumb. I thought it was his weakest I, weakest movie. Charlie Day was in there too. He was. Yeah, Charlie Charlie Day is in there. Uh, Ron Perlman. Uh, um, I'm on Scoot's side. I enjoyed Elvis. the first one quite a bit. Uh, Idris Elba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I enjoyed the first one quite a bit. I can't name them, but I thought I I thought yeah. that it was a cool, fun, yeah. dumb movie with, with kind of a cool sci-fi concept. Mr. Smarmy Pants over there. Do you guys like you Real Steel that. with Hugh Jackman too? That's my, that's <laughs> yeah, my follow-up actually, question. Yeah, actually, fuck you. It's got a lot of heart in that film. <laughs> Wait, what, what, what movie? <laughs> Real Steel with Hugh Jackman. Uh, it's no. Pacific Hugh Jackman Rim on no. a smaller scale. <laughs> I, I can see. Is. I can see Derek like oh, oh, Scott and Chris really said they like Pacific Rim today. Can't believe it! Exclamation <laughs> point. <laughs> Yeah, he's, got like a, he's, he's got like a burn book where he just talks shit on us after every podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's got like a podcast burn book. Yeah. Um, no, I have my okay. own podcast where it's just me. Like, I totally own <laughs> Scott and Chris today. <laughs> <laughs> Scott said he enjoyed should've... something that I think sucks. What a moron. <laughs> dummies. And then he goes, Total dummies. <laughs> 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 all right so uh my thoughts are very short and succinct uh i felt the same way about this trailer derek did i it i'll never pay to watch this movie but i will watch it when it comes out and you know what i'm saying um i i i don't know do you mean you're I, gonna I'm pirate a, it is that what you're saying absolutely <laughs> it's on and hbo tell- max you don't have to oh true yeah. true yeah so i guess but, you are but also pay for I, it. i've still faithfully been, been used been paying my amc Monthly, I haven't gone to a movie in like almost two months. I've still been paying the fucking flat rate month fee. There's a bunch of shit that I'm gonna take a day and just go see because there's never anybody there when I'm there. When keto's over, I need to eat a popcorn the size of my entire torso to make up for all the carbs I didn't eat this month. I would and, never go to a movie theater. You're such a brave fucking human being, and I'm not saying that like like douchey. Like you're so brave. Like I I mean it. Th- those chairs are made of fucking material that can hold germs and it doesn't matter what they do they're, 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 the they're, 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 they're leather chairs bro when's the uh, last time you were in a movie theater oh yeah 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 they're, they're nice they're reclining yeah, yeah yeah i'm i'm dumb because even the one by me has the nice leather but, but also like now. also i'll just bring my own fucking my own hand sanitizer just you know what i mean like it doesn't, i don't care <laughs> are you are fucking, you gonna be jerking care. off in there why <laughs> why bring it hand sanitizer yeah. well because you gotta touch you gotta touch shit and then you're gonna put your hands in your popcorn yeah, you gotta, t- you gotta oh, touch okay. door handles right. and shit to get in there. Yeah, fair. And then also, but, you gotta clean clean your dick off after you're done jerking <laughs> off. Uh, I can't. I can't imagine how bad it would hurt to put hand sanitizer on your dick. No, oh, horribly. I meant to wash the cum out. You know what? It's, uh, we don't need to get. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we do. I misunderstood. Let's though. just leave it at that. <laughs> I, I just want you to walk in with like a face mask on and a bottle of Lysol, and just like whenever someone gets too close, you just go <laughs> get. And you just chew them just, away. Just, like no, that. just like pull, pull unashamedly with like Lysol and hand sanitizer and like wave to the people with like, hey, what's up, Scott? Oh, wait, you're Scott. That doesn't make sense. I could have picked any name and I picked your name to be the name that you called someone else. I thought you were inferring that like I go there so often they all know me by name. You know what I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, you could have wrote that out. You could have just wrote that. You know. Yeah. No, it's all right. too late. All right. Moving on to our news. We got, oddly enough, a couple pieces of. Ghostbuster news, which I'm going to read together because I didn't put them together like a smarty pants. Uh, uh, so, OK, so the, the landscape in the pandemic of character reveals and all that shit has been upended. Right. So we got a, a, a new creature design from MasterChef Junior in Spain. He just happened to randomly show up. It's I guess probably what they're going to be. The new Hey Kids Buy Toys of These Ghost Companion. His name is Muncher. And let me just start off by saying he looks like a tardigrade filled with cum. And that's all I got for that. <laughs> he looks like he was voted most likely to wiggle his fingers at the last donut and say, don't mind if I do. This is what body positivity gets us. Even ghosts are fat now. <laughs> yeah. The slippery. If I, that, that's why I'm glad I have the friends I have. If I start gaining weight, I know you guys are going to make fun of me until I start losing weight again. And I appreciate it. I'm just really happy we all had one in the chamber for Muncher. We were all like, is it my turn yet? Can I go? <laughs> the cummy tardigrade. That's his name. Um, yeah, I don't know. He looks like they were trying to capture the spirit of Slimer, but have him look a little more palatable to kids. I mean... I I just I don't know I I'm don't get me wrong looking very much forward to this sequel uh, it looks like a nice true 
sequel to the original Ghostbusters saga. Uh, but I, uh, I don't know that whatever the monster doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. It doesn't make me like excited. I feel like they should have crackhead energy. That's the whole thing. They're like, (laughs) I don't know. That's Slimer had crackhead energy. This guy just looks like he (laughs) hangs out on your couch and doesn't really bother you. (laughs) Yeah, this it's is like, this is the guy cool. who like asks if he could stay for a little bit, like while he's in town, but then just never leaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, you know? he's couch surfing. You come, you come home, and he's like clipping his toenails, but like not cleaning them <laughs> yeah, up. Hey, bud, he's really nice verbally, but like he's just yeah. really, really, really. That would one hundred percent be his voice. He would have the voice of the fat kid from Jimmy Neutron, one hundred percent. You know, yes. yeah, you know what I'm talking about. But like, but also like, you know, he would eat all your Mama Celeste pizzas. And granted, they're like they're the, they're the garbage pizza. You know, right. but, that, but that's your special treat for when you're drunk and you don't want to go out. You don't want to. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. He knows. I, I don't he know. knows I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. I was <laughs> I was going to say, I don't remember how many like shitty microwavable treats Scott and I used to eat. Like, he used to heat up in the middle of the night at your fucking mom's house playing WoW on laptops and just there, hanging there, out. There, there, were, a lot of, there were a lot of hot pockets. But fucking but, way too many. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you but, and but, I did homemade uh, quesadillas. That was our thing. Yeah, Just dumping like yeah. an entire oh, no. pound bag yeah. of shredded cheese in yeah, between. Yeah, we two we would tortillas. we would be up. We would be like chugging. We would get a case of Yinglings and like kill it between the two of us in like four hours, and then walk back to this bar called the West End <laughs> to get a second case of Yinglings. Yeah. We, we'd make chicken quesadillas. Just just chicken and cheese, baby. Just chicken and That's cheese. All you need. And we would play Halo Reach <laughs> and oh, Halo Three for like eight hour blocks, just piss drunk. And, and, wings, and your mom was an angel. We, there was no way. There's no way she didn't hear us screaming at the TV. Yeah, she was just disappointed. That's that's why she never said anything. That's why she just walked right out the front door in the morning when we were still up playing Halo Three. She's like, she's like, fuck, he's never leaving. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Anyway, okay, so blue monster there's nothing else to say here i'm gonna reread the synopsis for afterlife just in case we forgot when a single mom and her two kids arrive in a small town they begin to discover their connection to the original ghostbusters and the secret legacy their grandpapa left behind as we know i think the kid in question here is finn wolfhart who's just been cast in everything imaginable for kids that requires a kid's role um but otherwise the trailer feels like it came out such a long fucking time ago at this point and i loved it yeah uh they need to give yeah. us more. They need to give us another trailer. Like if you're gonna push, the movie I, I back don't full remember full, it. Like I need to a watch full it. Full fucking again. year. Like we we like we like you can't push the movie back twice and not give us something to hold us over. Like it's it's now coming out in November, which is like it's almost a year away, boys. Yeah, it sucks real bad. It's not fun that they're doing that. And I absolutely agree. It's been uh, quite some time since we've seen a trailer for this, and and you should go watch it again. Uh, but onto another piece of Ghostbusters Afterlife. News. Uh, Ernie Hudson, you know, the member of the Ghostbusters cast that only survives because he does Comic-Con appearances. Uh, he <laughs> was on an interview for uh, Living Fearless, and he basically ruined that they're going to have Rick Moranis back in the movie. Like, he tried not to say anything about it, <laughs> but his actual quote is, when they asked him about Rick Moranis being in the sequel, he said, and I quote, I think the city is probably want to hold that one. I love Rick. Yeah, I'll let them share that. Um, so yeah, Rick Moranis is going to be in the fucking movie. Good job, Ernie Hudson. Like yeah. you just say no comment. I don't know. I, I just like, like say, Winston has a long history of fucking shit up. That's true. You know what I mean? Like he's in character. I mean, let's, let's be real here. Like when, when they were, uh, underground in Ghostbusters two, he's the one who summoned the train, the ghost train that almost took their faces off. Fair play. You know what I mean? That's you true. You, That's true. You, I mean, we all know you can suplex a ghost train, but they didn't do it. They didn't do it. <laughs> Sons of bitches. <laughs> All I know, yeah. I like ten weeks ago, I said the, the only Final thing, Fantasy joke, you fucking weebs. I, I know, I know it was. <laughs> I know it was a Sabin Final Fantasy VI joke. I, I didn't. Uh, the only thing about Rick Moranis, I always say, is that like apparently his wife died in the middle of his uh, acting yeah. career, and so he was like, "All right, well, I have to raise my kids," and so yep. he just decided to just end all of his contracts. I know when uh-huh. they did the Ghostbusters video games like ten years ago. He, they got everybody to come back and voice their characters except him because he was just like, no, yep. I'm still raising my kids. Um, I didn't know that he was getting back in the acting seat until I had read this article. Like he's in the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids thing that they're. I oh, didn't you didn't know that. Even though they were yeah. making that. Um, so uh, I, I think he's a fucking top shelf dude. And I'm yeah. super excited 100%. to see him come back. I, I didn't realize you didn't know um, about his recent reemergence in the acting scene. Yeah. And that that incredibly 
uh, sad and also inspiring story of him just like, look, my wife died in, in unfortunate circumstances. She died. Uh, I forget what she passed away from, but it was sudden from what I recall. Mm-hmm. And uh, he stopped what he was doing to raise his kids. And his actual first appearance back in, on uh, film or television, I think, was the Super Bowl last year. He was in a commercial with Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For, I think, Ryan Reynolds gin, maybe. I could be wrong. It, it might have been something else he was shilling. But uh, that, that was like a big deal because no one knew he was in it. And he pops in towards the end of the uh, end of the, the commercial. And everybody's like, oh, my God, this is the first time Rick Grant has been on TV in, in fucking decades. Yeah. Um. I'm happy about this. I agree. Yeah. Stand up dude. Uh, great part of the original Ghostbusters films. Great comic relief. He's just a good dude. And uh, Honey, I Shrek the but Kids can go fuck itself, though, because no one needs that shit. I'm kind of worried, though, because like he's shown his face for the first time in how long and somebody punched him in the face walking down the street in New York. Oh, yeah. So like, right. yeah, yeah. He got like he, he got assaulted in like Queens or something like somewhere. somewhere I didn't ridiculous. know that. So, someone like, punched him in the face just walking down the street. Um. So, I mean, hopefully that doesn't, you know, hopefully people don't keep punching him in the face. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Do you think well, that saying, every time he uh, leaves his no, house? No, 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 no. Is it the no, same guy saying, that keeps coming back to punch him in the face? Hopefully he's not going to be like, <laughs> he's a serial like, puncher. Fuck this. And like, just go back into hiding. You know what I mean? Like, like, oh, like yeah, you know what? That's why I quit. Fuck you guys. Just go yeah, yeah, well, in his like, mansion. <laughs> all I'm he's saying, like, all I'm saying is a groundhog will go back on the ground if it sees a shadow. Allegedly. Allegedly. What if what if Rick Moranis goes back into his into his mansion and we never see him again? Yeah, instead of a shadow, it's just getting punched in the face. He's back in his mansion. No, could could you six, imagine six, if six more years the, of winter? If that, if that fucking stupid groundhog comes out of the, out of its hole, someone just wailed it, like just fucking nailed it yeah. <laughs> right in the face. Oh man, <laughs> we should start that uh, tradition. <laughs> just let's get the fuck oh, back Jesus. in there, Jay. Yeah, somebody clip that and send it to Peta. I'd love I'd love an angry letter. <laughs> Uh, two things. One, his wife did in fact, she died of cancer in 1991, uh, which is when he left public to raise his kids. And the assault you were talking about October 1st, 2020, 730 in the, who punches somebody in the face at 730 yeah, in the morning? Crazy. Somebody who's done a lot of methamphetamines. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's real or, razzed up or, to be or, that mad yeah. before 8am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> somebody who, did, who does a lot of methamphetamines or somebody who hasn't done what they need to do. You know, someone someone who needs their medicine, more or less. Oh no, no, they they caught the guy. He was arrested uh, a month later. Uh, his name is Marquis Ventura. A month. <laughs> so yeah. apparently, the cousin of Ace Ventura is not doing so well lately, and is just running around punching. Can we can, can, can we can we get a, can we get a mug shot of that guy? I need I need to look him in the eyes. For her, uh, her, already, our precious baby boy. What's his name? I already closed the tab. Marquis Ventura, spelled just like Ace Ventura. M A R Q U I S. Also, before we continue, since he's looking that up, uh, Fred Durst has two kids. One of them, Adriana Durst, his daughter, and the other one, his son named Dallas. Oh, uh, of course it Fuck. is. Yeah, <laughs> of course God damn it is. <laughs> Just to let you guys know. Um, okay, I'm gonna move on to the next piece. All of right, news. There's, there's a picture oh, of oh. Marquise Ventura. Wearing an I Heart New York shirt. How do you love New York but hate Rick Moranis? Yeah, that makes no fucking like. There's plenty Easy. of reasons. New, New York hate. is not Rick Moranis. No, there's plenty of reasons to hate New York. New York, if New York, like <laughs> New York is just is just like a bigger Philadelphia, which means like some corners smell like pizza, some corners smell like raw sewage. Somebody's always screaming the N word, and they're usually a crazy white person. It's just there's plenty of reasons to hate New York, but but I can't imagine. I can't think of one reason to hate Rick Moranis. I can't do it. Uh, so I kind of I've this is a wild tangent and it's fueled 100 percent because we're all tired. But uh, I kind of remember this trend of like y- youths, a bunch of youths running around <laughs> New York. Oh, He's not a thousand uh, years old. <laughs> <laughs> youths. Well, youths was a reference, but if no one got it, we'll move on. Uh, <laughs> there Sorry. was a there was kind of like a trend of young kids walking around just punching oh, old people trying do you remember one that shot people yeah trying to it was not out. 2020 but it kind of sounds like the same thing i mean while you were talking about the the guy like it, it said that he this guy has been involved with another a number of other unprovoked attacks in lower manhattan just hours after he allegedly punched Rick. so this guy's just a bag of shit like who runs around just fucking punching people in the face yeah he's got problems. Oh, so he, he might not have even known who rick moranis was he was just yeah, punching right. people yeah. oh but, but, man but this is this is a good this is a good life lesson for us and all of our listeners. I thought you were going to say for Rick Moranis. <laughs> <laughs> Stay home, Rick. <laughs> no, the lesson is you should you should never. Well, I mean, you should never go out looking for a fight because it's what's the fucking point. But you should you shouldn't 
be careful who you punch, boys and girls, because you might punch Rick Moranis. Uh, and if you do, we might never get a Ghostbusters sequel, a proper Ghostbusters sequel with Rick Moranis. Mm-hmm. Uh, we might never get another Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which, uh, do we even need a new one of those? Yeah, so maybe it is good uh, no. to punch Rick Moranis. You know what I mean? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll forgive it just because if that's what brings punch. Rick Moranis back into, <laughs> into the public public spotlight. Basically, what we're saying is it might be okay depending on your... Um, your it's the trolley you know, dilemma. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Depending on your motivations, it might be okay. <laughs> like, are you gonna cancel fucking uh, the new Ghostbusters movie, or are you gonna cancel <laughs> the new Honey I Shrunk the Kids? <laughs> All right, let's move. Yeah, that's on, a good please. idea. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we're, we're going to a, a terrible spiral, and uh, I'm just yeah, saying, like the, the guy, the guy Marquis Ventura is clearly chaotic evil, right? Like, there was no rhyme or reason to it. Right. He didn't mean to punch Rick Moranis, but he did, which is, it goes to show you, you know, you never, you know, you shouldn't be yeah. walking around New York at 7.30 a.m. That was very last five minutes of a Simpsons episode of you. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have some horrible Game of Thrones news next. There's Game no such Thrones. thing as good Game of Thrones news. Well, okay. Yeah, Game of Thrones is going to be another prequel. So we talked about the last one, which is uh, House of the Dragon, I believe. This is another prequel series. The title alone uh, makes me very uncomfortable. It upsets my stomach to the point where I have to take a violent shit. Uh, it's called the Tale, uh, Tales of Duncan Egg, which will apparently follow it's got a hot flash. Sir Dun- Sir is it Duke- Sir Duncan the Tall and a young Aegon <laughs> Targaryen. What a stupid nickname! That it's Sir Duncan the Tall. That guy's got yeah. something to prove. That guy googles yeah. how to look tall when I'm sitting down. <laughs> Fucking dumbass! You, you know, you know, Sir he Duncan wears like tall. One thing about your feature is your nickname. What an asshole! Yeah, but you know, he met one guy like a couple inches taller than him once early on in his career, and has forevermore worn like six inch lifts because he's like, it'll never happen again. That's all I got. Uh, <laughs> wait, so, so wasn't so, good. Who is who That's is Sir, who is Sir Duncan the tall? Do we have any reference have n- points? No, no idea. And, I, and, you know, and, and I, the egg is is who? Aegon Targaryen, as in the Mad King. The yes. Mad King, yeah. His, yeah, wh- uh, wh- Duncan is why his brother. Just, why don't they just show us, like, we're already getting a series that's going to show us how the Mad King went mad, right? Like, that's what their whole fucking Targaryen prequel series is. I barely care about that. Why, yeah, the, why yeah. the fuck do I care about the that's prequel? That's not the same the, the Aegon, pre- The prequel to the prequel. No? That, no. That, uh, the, uh, uh, oh, that was Rhaegon Targaryen, Blood and, right? Blood and Thunder, or whatever the fuck it's called. Blood of the Dragon. I've been playing too say, much WoW. Orcs? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that takes place, like, 300 years before... Um, uh, the show did pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but a different Aegon. Okay, so this is going to be a show set roughly ninety years before A Song of Ice and Fire, uh, which is our actual Game of Thrones show for HBO. Yeah, uh, there's nothing else here. There's no writer attached. There's no nothing. Um, I, I just the name the name is so stupid. Can I ask you a serious question though? Is sure. there is there any uh, source material written by George that? Like are these are they like taking flashbacks from his books? Uh, he wrote some novellas yeah. uh, about. So that's what these are based on. He okay. wrote novellas about Sir Duncan the Tall and a young Aegon Targaryen. So they're going to take inspiration from that's that. like what he's um, been doing instead of finishing the last two books is writing these like lore books that are really interesting. But it's like, hey, George, like the talk is the, 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 the clock is ticking here. Like you're not looking good, but can you? He yeah. clearly doesn't know how to end it. Yeah. And at this point is just waiting for time to distance him from the awful ending, because my running suspicion is that's how he was going to end the book, too. And then he was kind of testing the waters yeah. to see how people liked it. And, and that, then he was like, fuck, yeah. Uh-oh. I didn't uh, think of I do anything any, else. If I do anything even kind of close to this, John still has to be, stay dead. Yeah. John Snow's yeah. dead. That's dumb. I'm bringing him back dumb. Yeah. Anyway, I don't care about that. We've talked about this before. Uh, Game of Thrones, it's it's kind of like this cultural phenomenon where it was all anybody ever talked about, and then they fucked it up so bad that now no one, it's like a joke now, yeah. and everyone hates hates on it. And uh, those it's are an actual sore subject for people. Like, like people yeah. get yeah. upset when you bring it up, because like, it was yeah. so bad. It was such a bad ending, and it was such a bad... Not just the ending, but just the, the, the quality of the show went down and all these individual uh, uh, paths of these characters went in such stupid directions that it, like when I think about Jamie's redemption arc and how badly they ruined it, I actually get like like a little yeah. depressed. Like <laughs> he should he should have died during the long night side by side with Brienne. Yeah, they should have died together 
That would have been a redeeming. That would have been a redeeming moment for him. Why do you have plot armor if there's three episodes left? Yeah. It makes no fucking sense. Sorry, <laughs> it's okay. That's what we're here for. Is uh, this show is yeah, uh, this but, podcast is therapy for us to but, spend but, about? But, but stupid now, shit. now they're trying to like, like what makes you think? Like just, just let people fucking forget. A one prequel series is already too many. Nobody's asking for it. Nobody cares. Two, two. Yeah. Dunk an egg. I want to. I want to find the people who are pushing this shit to HBO and dunk their heads in a fucking bathtub until their arms stop twitching. That's what I want to dunk. It just shows that HBO, though, like in all seriousness, still is not listening to what fans like want to see no. and want to experience. They still don't care. Mm-mm. No, they're just. Uh, w- what else can we squeeze out of this yeah. to to get a little bit more money? And but that being said, speaking of squeezing things out of source material for more money, there's going to be a Witcher prequel show. Boom! Transition of the year. Thank pretty you good, very much. Uh, the Witcher Blood Actually, Origin. Actually, transition of the year goes to uh, Elliot Page. <laughs> you, you get an honorable mention though transition joke of the year goes to scott kelly well uh, witcher the, don't worry we're early on 2021 i'm sure we'll say way worse shit than that the witcher blood origin that was not even starring, bad. starring jody turner smith uh, it's not will smith's daughter i don't I think she's related to this the actual smiths that you're thinking of um in the Witcher prequel series, <laughs> uh, that was to Scott. I'm sorry, not not to you. Chris was reading my went, mind. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Um, there. So this show is going to be set 1,200 years. And so, sorry, I'll read the the official tagline here. Set in an elven world, 1,200 years before the world of the Witcher, Blood Origin will tell a story lost to time, the creation of the first prototype Witcher, and the events that led to the pivotal conjunction of the spheres when the worlds of monsters, men, and elves merged to become one. So, before we say how much we hate cash money grabs, can you read these stories the- while I go to bed? You <laughs> yes, have such fervor behind your words that I was like, thank you. I was sort of whisked away for a second and it just made me jealous. I don't have the son. gravitas. I don't have the low register to lull you to sleep. So I'll probably, if I get excited, it'll wake you yeah, up. But I'll pull my like, blanket oh. up like this in excitement. <laughs> oh, okay. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, let, let me try this. <laughs> okay. So I, before we shit on this concept, because we hate spinoffs for the sake of spinoffs, I actually am very interested to see the creation of the first Witcher. That sounds cool. And uh, the conjunction of the sphere is like this big, they talk about it in the Witcher game series is, you know, like they said, the worlds of monsters, men and elves merge to become one. That's neat. And it, since it's such like a cool fantasy event, I would like to see it explained a bit more, at least in detail. That being said, I don't uh, I don't give a shit about this show and I, I, I'll wait for a trailer. I'll be yeah. cautiously. uh I don't know. I don't even I'm not even gonna say optimistic. <laughs> I'll just wait with bated breath for the trailer to before I make any decisions about whether I'm gonna actually watch it. But uh Scott, how do you feel about the news before us? I don't care at all. Um, <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, well like like well like for, first like shit, twelve hundred years before the why is he why are you even using the name like you're you're using the the You're trying to just dogpile on the success of the first season of a show that still it's yet to be seen whether the second season will be, uh, you know, a successful follow up to. It's too early. Like w- they used to wait until, you know, like shows had like three or four successful seasons under their belt, and then they would, you know, fucking throw out a bunch of spin off pilots. You know, like like fucking uh, Angel was a spin off of Buffy. Joey was a spin off of Friends. Ugh. Uh, fucking <laughs> yeah. uh, Frasier was a spin off of Cheers. Like like. You know, toss salads and scrambled eggs, boys. There's, there's no, there's no waiting anywhere. They're so impatient. They can't wait to capitalize on the marginal success of of an eight episode season. To me, it's just like, is it how how many resources is it stealing away from the production teams and the right, like the how many writers and you know, like shouldn't you be focused still on season two of The Witcher? And if that's wrapped, should you be focused on writing season three? Because right. if see if 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 season two is the success you think is going to be that you're doing this, you know six part mini series, whatever the fuck it is, then you probably should start writing season three before you start on this little fucking side project because it, it all collapses if your main franchise doesn't do well. It right. Just, it seems too early in the game to, to be putting that many eggs in that basket. You're exactly right. It's a six part live action show. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Derek, how did you feel about this? Uh, news? To, to, I'll preface this by saying that I was pleasantly surprised by The Witcher. It was not a perfect show. Uh, it was very heavily flawed, but it did just enough right and had just enough charm that it, I, I really enjoyed it. I think that Henry Cavill, agree with that. Uh, carried a lot of the weight of that. He just loved the role so yeah, much a, that he like on his big honking beefer shoulders. Exactly. I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> that he like elevated the rest of it. I know I mentioned that before we had talked about it. But anyway, uh, in the, the world of the Witcher, the conjunction of the sp- spheres is like a really uh, huge thing that sets literally everything uh, uh, in place for everything that happens. Um, yep. So th- if they were doing a prequel show, I would not like this. But the fact that it's a limited series says to me that they have a, a succinct story that they want to tell and they're going to tell it and be done with it. Uh, so I'm actually I'm I'm into it. I, I, I like I said, like I every bit of news that I got about the Witcher show leading up to it for years, I thought it was going to be dog shit when they were like, oh, we're going to show Henry Cavill's outfit in a couple of days. I'm like, this is going to look so stupid. He's going to be a guy in a white wig and it ended up looking great. Uh, the set pieces were awesome. Some of the special effects were dog shit, but overall it was well done. So um, I have faith in them to do pretty well with this. The other thing is, I don't know how to say this guy's name, but Andre Sapkowski. Uh, yeah, that's pretty close. He directed a, a lot of the like best episodes of uh, Game of Thrones, like Red Wedding, uh, Battle of the Bastards, Battle for Winterfell. Um, so the fact that he's attached to the project is is encouraging to me, um, unless I'm convinced. <laughs> Confusing him with someone completely different, in which case, uh, go ahead and hashtag fuck TCN me, listeners. Uh, but uh, no, I'm into it. I think it's going to be cool. I, uh, whereas I would, I don't know if I'd consider you the group cynic because we're on the cynical nerd and we're all pretty cynical, but I'm very surprised that you said uh, limited edition because if this thing is successful, there will be a season two. Yeah, that's true. Undoubtedly. Uh, however, I, you know, I, I kind of, I know where you're coming from. Um, so there's a cool fact at the end of this article that says that, um, parrot analytics reported that the original Witcher season one was the third most in demand original streaming series in the U S behind stranger things and Mandalorian. That's impressive. I I knew the show did well for Netflix. Obviously they greenlit season two before season one even came out. Uh, they knew that it was going to be well received. Uh, but I didn't know it was that uh did that well for them that they were they were uh looking forward to it and and your assessment of season one was spot on there are some episodes in that first season that feel legitimately and we've talked about this before very quickly that feel like side quests from start to finish from like the witcher Mm three like you're like oh there's this whole storyline let's just go sort this out and figure out what's wrong with it but oh there's a catch at the end gotcha there's something fucked up morally about it and i was like yes uh, OK, so moving along to streaming shows that are in development, we have uh, rumors that there is a Harry Potter TV series oh, in fuck. early development at HBO Max. Uh, I, <laughs> Derek, go ahead. I mean, you just I'm ready. I, I have nothing to say other than that. We're going to have to see people with their fucking Hogwarts house on their goddamn Facebook profile <laughs> picture all over again. We're just getting to the other end of that. We just got to the other end. Like, there's a couple scragglers here and there, but overall, the the majority don't do it anymore. It's going to happen all over again. Thanks. Thanks, HBO Max. First fucking ding against you. This is the first time I'm not shilling for you. This is a dick move. Fuck you. It's everything I have to say about this horrible idea. Nice. Scott, how do you feel about this? Uh, I mean, I could give a shit less about Harry Potter, to be honest. Uh, But you know... If you've been paying attention, listeners, to J.K. Rowling's Twitter feed, you know that she is... <laughs> or not, us, because we've talked about yeah, it Yeah, yeah, or us, which, I mean, if, you, if you're listening to us and you drift in and out, I don't blame you. There's a lot of rambling. <laughs> uh, but but uh, she, she has been in, in hot water with the uh, LBGTQ uh, community for quite some time now. She's, uh, uh, she's said things that some consider to be transphobic. And in the wake of this article... Uh, I mean, there's been an, an outcry on Twitter of people saying that, you know, it's wrong to support her and give her more money, which is essentially what this project's going to do. Um, and I think more, more so it raises questions of, like, where's the fine line between, in, like, enjoying the art? And, like, like at, w- at what point? And I, I, don't think, I don't think there is a point, but some people seem to think there's a point where supporting an artist who's guilty of something makes you equally as guilty 
in their in their you know their hate speech or their uh their actions like people who listen to michael jackson aren't rapists but he might have been he probably was he did he did he fucked them kids but he didn't it's, fuck uh, them kids. he did not fuck them kids <laughs> He definitely fucked up kids. One of these days, we're going to have to have a court case. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Diddler, yeah. Senator Diddler Court? <laughs> Diddler Court has to make a return. The yeah. Honorable Judge MFD will preside. On the one side, we will have Senator MFD and <laughs> Sleepy Sleep, Senator Sleepless. Yeah, but, but I mean, like, I mean, that, that was my biggest takeaway is like, it's it's a very divisive thing now because of her her personal remarks. Uh, and <laughs> as somebody who I know enjoyed Harry Potter from start to finish, Chris, I mean, like, like everyone has personal attachments. Whoa, to... that felt like a shot. No, no, you're right. no, no. You're no right. But, but I'm, just, I'm just saying. Like, let me let me pose this question to you. Let's say that you found out tomorrow that George Lucas was a pedophile. I would still love Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't be able to help it, right? Like, I mean, you, like for for people who have built in memories that like associate the Harry Potter books and those characters with their entire childhoods, their a large chunk of their lives. Like, it is obnoxious. Like, you know, like granted, Star Wars fans and even Star Trek fans don't have like the the house sorting hat equivalent of whatever the fuck you know what I mean like sure, sure there's lots of assholes with like a fucking rebel symbol on their Humvee who are completely missing the entire point because they they own a fucking Hummer um I had a point yeah um <laughs> I, I, I like the original Harry Potter movies too I don't like the scary beasts and how to grab them or whatever it's called but the first <laughs> ones I like him too. I do. It's just that it's another one of those things. It's like the office. Can I be a part of the podcast title, please? <laughs> Scary beast and how to grab them. Uh, it, it's another um, uh, uh, Johnny Depp and how to beat him. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Like defeat him? Anyway, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's another one of those things. It's like the office. It's like the actual show itself is not bad. It's the people that watch it that yeah. make it bad. That's what yeah. Harry Potter is. And if you make more Harry Potter shit, there's going to be more Harry Potter people wearing the capes. Remember when that was the thing? You want to you want to see cape people again? I once cape I once date, I once went on a date with a girl who had a, a scarf that was her house. Her oh, house I thought scarf. you were gonna say she wore a cape the whole time. I was like, oh no, no, no. <laughs> I I would I would much rather fuck someone wearing a cape just because it would be funny. But uh, <laughs> but but being but being on public with somebody who's wearing a Harry Potter scarf like that 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 was the the first and last date. Keep in mind that I did I did go I, I did go out on three dates with a girl who was a Limp Biscuit fan before I found out before I figured it out. Oh, no, oh no, yeah, yeah. I'll bop to Limp Biscuit right now. I don't give a shit. Unironically, I, I'll do it. I'll put on chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water as soon as we're done. No shame. How, how did you uh, find out she was a Limp Biscuit fan when you pulled up to pick her up one day? Did she just go no. rolling, 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 rolling? No, that wasn't how you found You're out. Like, so you want to go to the bar? And she was like, yeah. <laughs> I, I met I met her at a Halloween party at my house when I lived in Philly. She, uh, she, she had a backwards like New York. She, she had a, she, she had a New York Yankees hat on, and I was like I was like I was like, what are you, Fred Durst? She's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's funny. I thought it was like ironic. She was Fred Durst for Halloween, and then she just came back that way again. Well, no, but then we then we like we went out to a bar one night. She had the same fucking red hat on. I was like, oh, maybe she just likes the Yankees. Like, all right, whatever. Uh, and then like the third time we hung out, we were out somewhere. I want to say it was Barcade, and like. She heard a Limp Biscuit song and started singing the words, and that's—I mean—that's a dead giveaway. Like, if you if you like and appreciate Limp Biscuit, ironically or po like perhaps post ironically, Derek, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the artisan fartisan equivalent of enjoying Limp Biscuit is. <laughs> unironic, totally unironic. Really? Where do you draw the line, though? I don't. Did you like that? Did you like that <laughs> weird song where they're like, we start like smell the girl's underwear, like that one? What is it? Fuck! I eat you oh. alive. Oh no! Yeah. No, <laughs> is that a real song? Yeah. Oh no. He's okay. like, he's like hey, how, how I love some, to sniff on your panties. I didn't know about here. How, how I love to sniff on your panties. I'd eat you alive. And like, he, this girl's like, it's it's the girl from American Beauty who's like Kevin Spacey's daughter, but she's tied to a chair with like cheap like Christmas lights, and he's like this interface with a megaphone screaming. It's horrifying to watch. There's if a you music watch that, video. Oh my if you god! Watch that, if you watch that video with the audio off, it looks like like, <laughs> like an ISIS like like an ISIS video. <laughs> but with, oh no! <laughs> and, uh, and the whole okay. time, you, the whole time you just be thinking like, they just need to cut this poor girl's head off. She's had enough. <laughs> like, just, just, oh just, Jesus just, Christ! Just end it. Like, <laughs> uh, I have two very important questions. Uh, one is, uh, what's Ron doing in World of Warcraft right now? She is uh, <laughs> leveling her. 
the Zandalar, what are they called? Zandalar trolls or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Zandalari. Yeah. She went balance. She's, she's digging it. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a hundred percent sure it's well. Cause it's a very tiny on your web. Yeah. yeah. That's what I, saw a, quest, I saw a quest text pop up. Where I was like, yeah. <laughs> All right. Nice. But the world, the, the, just the shapes I was, I was like, yeah, that's definitely well. I'm glad she's having a good time. Uh, the other question was not a question. It was a statement, which is that, um, fuck JK Rowling now. So here's the way I look at it. Uh, those books were uh, a pretty decent part of my um, my teenage years. Like the the I, I was the same age as, as Harry Potter when the book came out. This happened to most of us around our age, but I was the same age as him when it came out. I felt like I matured as the books got darker and heavier, and I enjoyed them thoroughly. And it's not like... And then, after Harry Potter was done, because remember the entire series, just to remind people, came out, and then a couple years after that, she said some off color shit. Yeah. And then a couple more years after that, she said some more off color shit. And that's yeah. where we are today. Uh, but it's not like. So she, you know, I read the series. She said some weird shit about Dumbledore. And then it, I forget the specifics. So I know it was not good. And then I was like, well, that doesn't. It's not like she said that and it recontextualized all the books for me or that I was like, oh, that's what she meant when she did. No, nah, like the books were still enjoyable they were still a, a formative part of my uh young years and i liked them a lot but now that i know that she's a bag of shit uh, personally me the way i look at it will no longer support her things so i didn't you know i'm not gonna go pay money to see fantastic beasts like go fuck her um and that's anything else she makes can i'm not gonna yeah you know, fuck her and that's really the thing like for years she had done this thing where she you're saying like Oh, having a revelation about something she said about a character didn't make you like re-understand them or something like that's the whole point. She would just basically go, oh, Dumbledore was gay the whole time, by the way, uh, as oh, that a, was the first thing as a way to like win points with people. And for a while, people were like, oh, that's so cool. That's so. Be-. But everybody like over time caught on to it was like, you're kind of playing us right now. Like you're just like, right, like retroactively adding in these things to make us feel like you're like uh, inclusive. Like, yeah. And you're like in on the yeah. fight or something. And then she, it turns out like as if that wasn't bad enough that she's actually saying things directly against the groups that she's claiming to be fighting for. And it's like, it's just so dirty. It's so grimy. Um, Yeah. It's really fucking weird. I don't think that you should feel like guilty for uh, liking Harry Potter. Jesus Christ. Harry Potter as a kid. Cause I did too. I read up to, I think like the fifth one and same thing. I was around the same age as as, uh, he was. And it's like, as you're getting into your you know middle of your teenage years and you're experiencing darker things darker thoughts he is too and you're kind of growing with the i mean it was an interesting unique experience and there's nothing wrong with looking back on that fondly but it doesn't change the fact that jk rowling is a piece of fucking dog shit oh yeah yeah 100 percent. but i i don't think it's fair to any fandom for uh for them to be at the mercy of the creator you know what i mean like right. like at, at, in any way shape or form like if this new show comes out and it's a banger and people enjoy it, I think they should be able to enjoy it guilt free. Yeah, honestly. I mean, like, like it's and, and same, same with the Fantastic Beast movies. Like, it's not for me at all. But I think there, there's a very big distinction between uh, you know, su- supporting what someone says and then find like, especially right now, like with everything going on, man, like if there's something that brings you joy, you shouldn't have to feel guilty about enjoying it because the person who originally created the franchise is a is a bag of shit. Yeah, I mean, it just it feels like false equivalency that to say that somebody who enjoys a new Harry Potter movie or a new series is in any way as guilty of hate or bigotry in the same way that J.K. Rowling is. It's it's not it's it's false equivalency. It's it's horseshit. And as a matter of distinction, right. I think like just for anyone who's listening, I think that like the 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 distinction we're drawing is that like J.K. Rowling obviously says like anti-trans stuff that's really gross. Within her work, it's not like, you know, we're enjoying anti-trans uh, uh, narratives right. or something. You know what I mean? It's like she didn't inject that stuff into the books. If you're enjoying something that is meant to hurt people, you probably should feel bad about it. But that's not the case with Harry Potter. That was never the yeah. case with it. It's just the person who created it fucking sucks. And every time you rent a movie or buy a book or go to fucking Universal in Florida, some of that money goes into an asshole's pocket and something about that just feels grimy to me. But Scott, right. you're absolutely correct. If this is something that you want to watch, you shouldn't have to feel like shit for wanting to watch it. It's just funny to right. make fun of you for it. Unless of course, 
she makes another Harry Potter book and it's called Harry Potter and a hate speech rally. <laughs> at, that, at that point, you totally have to, to just disavow her because, you know, she's even worse. But we're going to move on. We're spending way more time on that than I thought. Uh, I don't care about that news. I, I don't I don't want any more Harry Potter. I think Harry Potter's reached a saturation point somehow, even this many years after the books stopped coming out. Like, I don't. The Fantastic Beasts first movie was mediocre at best. The second one I didn't give a shit about. Um, I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. And that's all I have to say about it. So, um, yeah. so we're so, on to our. Go ahead. I'll just say it's sometimes like. A, like a very, a very finite end is what like. Make, Absolutely. Is what makes a series as good as it is. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Preach. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, for Christ's sake, like it, it took two books to finish off this, the, a two part. Like, wasn't that like, weren't they like Deathly Hallows part one and two, like over 1400 pages combined or something like that? Probably because the 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 yeah. they were honking beefers at the end. They were they yeah. were probably seven hundred pages a piece. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. I remember literally they, they would. I'd be like, oh, uh, this is. I feel like I'm in fifth grade now. Yeah. This book is this fucking thick. Yeah, when you, I mean, when um, you you drag things out forever, they lose they lose all their effect. You know, the, the yeah. ending you originally wrote means nothing. Like we see it now with the with the sequel trilogy of Star Wars. Like if the end would have been Jedi, you know, like that would that that would have been enough for the Skywalker saga. Everything yeah. we got after that feels like it's just. By the way. <laughs> Luke's grumpy, by the way. Hey, I, but did I, you know what happened to Luke 30 years later? Yeah. Nothing interesting. Wanna check it out? <laughs> like, no. Burn. Uh his emo uh nephew. <laughs> Real angry at him. Uh okay, so moving on, we have a couple things of Resident Evil 8 news. First and foremost, there was a gameplay demo revealed. It's 15 to 18 minutes long called Maiden. Uh it's on a, on the PS5. Uh, I think we've all checked it out. I didn't sit and watch the entire thing because let's be honest, watching someone just explore a giant mansion is not the most riveting gameplay uh, for a demo, at least. Like, I know I'd be into it if I was fucking playing it, but like just watching someone like saunter through this mansion, I'm like, OK, and it's Resident Evil. I get it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we saw the bug lady uh, in the in the gameplay trailer and M- yes, Mr. Please. Mistress Manblood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Please infect all my holes with your bugs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, I'd rather spit in my no. mouth even with the fucking fly in there. I would. Oh, mm-hmm. gross! But it looks cool. I mean, that's, what, that's the kind of thing with like Resident Evil demos. At least from my personal experience of not being the craziest like fan about it, but like, it, yes, it looks cool, and I would like to play it. Please, sir, give me the game. And the game, the game's just like I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I feel, feel like- about it, Scott. We're not missing out on anything by not having a PS5. Listeners, neither are you. If you don't have a PS5, you missed. You basically missed a tech demo. Like there, you don't. You, you <laughs> yeah. do nothing but walk around. You can watch. You can watch the thing in its entirety. You can see the cutscene yeah. where um, Mommy Milker's Dompire Queen. Uh, the, the the she she has she has the build of every female from a Tom and Jerry cartoon, where it's just like the legs is all you see. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh my god. That was a really interesting uh, way to put that. I, it, I, yeah, it, I, I want her to step step in me like step in me like I'm a puddle. You know what I mean? Just like just splash around. <laughs> just so you, the rest of you just displaces around her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, no, I thought it was. I mean, like the the, the way that the um, I didn't watch the whole thing, obviously, because what Chris just said. Oh my god, I would have to have just the most boring personality to be the kind of person that's like I can't wait to watch this person wander around in a game I want to play with no guns. Um, but you know, I skimmed it and I did watch the ending. First of all, uh, I, I think that they're I'm getting really hyped for this game. And all jokes aside, it's not just because of the uh, um, Madam Milk and the uh, murder mommies. It, it really looks like um, they're putting a lot of eggs in this basket. Uh, it's it's very atmospheric. I let her lay eggs in my basket. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, the lighting is like really good in it. It just looks really creepy. I'm I'm really getting hyped for this. It's a good mix of Resident Evil Four with, with the out, the outdoor village, and then that classic Resident Evil mansion. You know, like obviously it's more gothic. It's it's, but it it is kind of a a very blatant callback to the original game. Yeah. that started it all. You know, and, and to have you going up the spiral staircases to see like the chandeliers, to see the marble flooring and the candles, it just it takes me back, dude. Like, yeah, it, I, dude, I, that I, room I'm, is I'm, so beautiful with yeah. the chandelier. It's so yeah. fucking I'm, eerie I'm, in there, dude. I'm sold on the aesthetic alone, and then when you yeah. see when you see actual gameplay. Uh, I mean, it looks really fucking fun. Yeah, yeah the, and then you the, see the, the tits, and it's like, oh my god. Yeah. Uh, the biggest problem going. with Resident Evil Seven was that the enemy design was lacking, aside from 
uh, the family members that you deal with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like like all all the other enemies that you encounter are pretty much copy paste. They're just black blobs. You know. Uh, yeah. This seems like it's gonna have a lot of really interesting enemy variants that you're have, gonna have to like deal with in different ways. Uh, it seems like they're kind of like tapping into all different kinds of mythology: werewolves, vampires. Um, and you also see in uh, Madam Madam Milkers, you see that that little tinge in the eye from the young girl whose name I forget from Resident Evil Seven. Um, oh, they're they're oh, some, yeah. they're equivalent of Samara from the Ring, whatever the fuck you call, you call the little girl in that. Yeah. Um, but it, it's I think it's we're gonna see a lot of things come full circle. There's rumors that some of these some of these. Uh, can you guys hear that? Yeah, a little, a little bit. bit. Not that not, bad. Not anymore, though. Yeah. Uh, there's rumors that some of these, uh, like, vampire slaves of Mommy Milkers, <laughs> Mad- sorry, Madam Milkers, uh, is, <laughs> is good, are, are, like, characters from the past, it, like, past uh, characters from the games. Like, there's possibly that maybe Claire Redfield is caught up in this. We saw yeah. we saw blood scrawled on the wall that said, help me, brother. And unless Hulk Hogan's wandering around their mansion, <laughs> unless Hulk Hogan's wa- running around the mansion. Oh, God, Claire- please. <laughs> Claire, Claire Redfield is probably in this game since that's probably why Chris is there. Uh, we've seen in the trailer before. We've seen Chris, we think, shoot Mia. Mm-hmm. You guys hear that? I don't know. Yeah. So, like, basically, there's 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 uh, incentive to play through the catalog is what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, there, there's well, I mean, like most of these games like have have aged very well and the ones that haven't have remakes that yeah. have aged very well because they're all less than three years old uh, with, <laughs> with, with the exception of Resident Evil 0 and Resident Evil 1 yeah uh, th- that, that's that's still the original port I believe from GameCube just with a slight graphical update right um, yeah, I just but, I mean, can't bring myself to spend $50 on a game that's four hours long I heard that you, two and you three don't are. You don't have to do that. I have all of them on PlayStation Four, every single one. Boom! Oh, and shit. I, 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 you, you are you are you are both cordially invited for some form of couch co-op at any one of our homes. We'll all three of us sit on on a sofa. We could play through them. We could stream them, or we can just videotape ourselves playing through them and do some kind of YouTube content. But I call the middle. <laughs> Chris is going skiing. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, going skiing, boys. Um, yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. Um, I think it looks pretty, pretty titties. What was it? What is it? Madam Milk and uh, what? Madam Milk and the Murder Mommies. And the Murder Mommies. <laughs> that's yeah. gotta be the. Yeah. So that's the. That's gotta be the title because it's a fucking winner. And I think the. I. I'm gonna surprise you guys. I have a mental image for the image already. I, I, I think like I know when you I'm surprise us. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, it's, it's a little, little surprise. It's just. It's a good time to be a Resident Evil fan. And for people who haven't really gotten into it, like I know you, you haven't really, Derek. Mm-hmm. Uh. This 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 franchise kind of works in threes, right? Like the originals were th- were uh, first three were de- like deadpan survival horror in the vein of Silent Hill, but like it were it was more like managing resources and avoiding combat, avoiding conflict. You had limited ammo. Better save that ammo for a boss if you can juke the zombie or avoid the dogs or mm-hmm. you know you know there's birds in this room. Don't go in that fucking room unless you have to. You had to play smart in the first three. Uh, four through six became over the shoulder action games with like action horrors. You know, the survival went out the door, but now with the, with the return to first person, we're seeing the horror come back again. Yeah. You know, and Resident Evil 7 uh, did that very well, building tension with the family and seeing this come full circle, seeing it like done on a, a more grandiose scale where we're getting like those action elements back into it. But it's still very like oh, dude, it's it's. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I can't wait. Yeah. Like everything I've seen uh, is enticing. Even that doughy fat merchant. I, I want to know what his deal is. I want to get yeah. in those roles and see what's up. I I I, 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 I just, I'm I'm gonna miss the original merchant the entire time though. Yeah, you know, like that little, heh, you know. No, eh. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, 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 I want to you... throw you a fucking uh, welcome, stranger. Here, I know, I know. Got rare items for you, stranger. You know, that little fucking like. He sounded yeah. like he sounded like the animatronics at uh, Pirates so of the Caribbean and Disney World context. were broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, good. stranger. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, more Resident Evil news as part of Capcom's Resident Evil Village reveal. Uh, they said that they will be making, uh, and part of the 25th anniversary, they said they will be making a special multiplayer game called Resident Evil uh, Reverse. Sorry, that's R E colon verse. That will be free for anybody who purchases Resident Evil Village. Reverse is a competitive multiplayer mode where up to four players will play as one of several iconic characters. Uh, the full roster has not been revealed, but the trailer shows. 
uh, Redfield, Valentine, Leon Kennedy, Claire Valentine, uh, as well as, you know, enemies like Nemesis and, and, and uh, yeah, Jack Baker from Resident Evil 7. That's kind of cool. Um, other characters shown include Hunk. I don't know what <laughs> Hunk is. And uh, Ada Wong. Though who knows how many more will be available when Reverse is released. Is Hunk Thanks, just a IGN. total babe, like in like a Speedo with like nice hair? The question is, are we going to get Tofu from Resident Evil 2? Are we gonna get yeah, tofu? that's that's the real question. Yeah. I do know about tofu. I don't know what hunk is. I don't is. remember what tofu is, but like that. Just oh, it's like, exactly what it sounds like. Yeah, you just tofu? play as a giant white block of tofu. The entire <laughs> yeah. <game. laughs> yeah. Surprise. Um, yeah. Mm. I, I don't have. I'm not gonna. Even if I buy Village, I'm not gonna touch this. I I don't care. Yeah, I, yeah. So no. really, really, I'm gonna default to Scott here. Like, do you do you are you interested in this? No. No, 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 Resi- no Resident Evil fan is like they tried this with Resistance. They're, right. try- they're trying to add in multiplayer elements because they want to be able to get in on the cash grab that is loot boxes, customizable Absolutely. skins. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like to me, this is like when The Last of Us Part One had multiplayer. Nobody, what, why? Nope, like, like don't care. nobody wants it. This isn't Gears of fucking War. This isn't Call of Duty. Like nobody's like. So it's it's when they more like Call of Boobies with this one, huh? <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Got I'm him, sorry. Man. Continue. <laughs> Got him. Modern Warfare. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Boobies, Modern Warfare. Um, Did you guys watch the like minute long clip of of uh, the multiplayer? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's bad. It really yeah. looks Yeah, it doesn't look great. It awful. looks like Operation Raccoon City. Like it looks like yeah, they've done nothing it to looks change worse the than that. It, it's really it, it's it's not exciting in any way, what, shape or when form. When you have an exciting single player campaign mm-hmm. and you tack on even even if it's like a special like, hey, Guys, this is an anniversary. Like, no matter how you try to spin it, you're trying to tack on something that's going to have in-game purchases. Is what you're trying to do. Yeah, they did it with Resistance. Uh, like, it's it's the Tomb Raider having multiplayer and the Last of Us having multiplayer all over again. You have a solid single-player campaign, adding in a multiplayer mode that no one's asking for, and then making me feel like I have to hunt those achievements. It it drives me insane. I hate it. Yeah. I'm not going to go full Jello file. I don't have to get them, but knowing that knowing, <laughs> knowing that they're there and I'm never going to get them is going to bother me a little bit. I understand. Mm-hmm. I understand. Mm-hmm. Uh, Derek, you're on the same page as me, and right? I, well, I, me and Scott, I, really. I, I We're don't all in care. I don't care about it yeah. at all. Okay. I might have like right. maybe wanted to give it a shot if I hadn't watched that little clip that they showed. And at that point, it's like <laughs> you can polish. You did yourself as a disservice. You yeah. Like you should have just kept it a secret. My God. Yeah. Derek. We're gonna have a multiplayer game with all these popular characters. You want to play it? Cool. And then just hide <laughs> it away, sequester it until you're ready to release it. Um. Last but not least, one more piece of Resident Evil news, and then we're on to our. Uh. Well, then we're on to Derek's pee break, yeah. and then we're on to our two reviews. Uh, so Resident Evil 4 is getting the same remake treatment that Resident Evil uh, 2 and 3 have gotten, um, which I'm very, very excited for. 4 is one of my favorites, just personally. It's 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 almost like the Harry Potter books. It hit me at the perfect age. I loved the fuck out of it. I had the GameCube, uh, played the original Lost Plagas, was fucking dope. Uh, but this is a piece of sad boy news. The remake for 4 oh, is God. delayed due to a development overhaul. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's- so change in... Good. Oh, so it's not sad boy news, Chris. Rejoice. Why? Rejoice in our salvation of the fandom. Oh. The okay. the comp the, 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 the studio that was that was going to be uh putting out Resident Evil 4 remake is the one that did Resident Evil 3 make, as it's begrudgingly called by the fan base. Yeah, I hate that I, a lot. I liked I liked Resident <laughs> Evil 3 make. I did, but it was short. There was missing content. Uh and I forget what the studio name is. Bad fan. M2. M2. And M2 yeah. uh, was the lead on this project, and they've been put into more of a, I guess you would say, a tertiary, tertiary role. I don't know if that would apply. Yeah. Um, but from what I heard, they're, re- they're overhauling the game to make it more true to the original. They're adding, yeah. they're adding key features to make, you know, like quality of life things. Obviously, a graphical facelift. Hopefully, the AI for Ashley isn't dumber than a box full of dicks this time. Uh, but, you know, box full cum brain. But um, it, it looks like we're going to get something that's going to be more true to the source material as a result of this realigning. And if it takes an extra year and we get something that's like going to have the replay value that the original had and be able to like recapture that magic for another generation, for new fans and old fans alike, it's the right move. And I'm 100 percent behind it and excited for it. Uh, yeah. So let me just to clarify, I meant sad boy just because it meant I had to wait longer and I'm very impatient. Uh, but I, it's great. It was great news, you know, for the development of the actual title. I, I agree 100 percent. Um, Derek, did you play four at all? No, I played one and two back in the day. I always wanted to play three. 
uh, and never got a chance to. And that that's that's it. That's all I played. Four is actually kind of like my entry. I didn't play the the two and three. I didn't have a PlayStation. I always had the Nintendo consoles growing up. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't touch those. And then four came out on GameCube and I was like, well, fuck yeah, I'll buy it. Let's see what this is all about. And I loved it. Sucked in and never went back and bought the originals on PlayStation. So I, I just kind of went forward from there. My first true experience playing two was the remake. And I know it's blasphemous, but like I like don't get me wrong. I had friends who had it and I'd played like a half hour of it here or there at their house. But like I didn't play yeah. play it. You know what I mean? Um. Anyway, that being said, are you, pee pee time. Oh, yeah. Pee pee time. That's it. Yeah, you got a pee pee butt. I got a. T- I got. You got a, a, a pee pee. <laughs> All right, don't talk to any strangers in there. Yeah, you can't hear us right now, but uh, don't shake more than twice. Ah, shake it a couple times. And if, uh, yeah, if you little, do, tell me what his name is. <laughs> uh, okay, so while he's gone, we're gonna shill like we always do. Scott, if someone wants to reach us on, let's say, a social media platform called Twitter, how would they do that? Uh, they could tweet us at the Schmeg Nerd. That is T H E. S H M E G N E R D. Uh, you can uh, ask us a question with hashtag ask TCN. You can correct a fuck up with hashtag fuck TCN. Uh, you can also uh, tag us with hashtag bussy or hashtag thrussy. Uh, I don't know if the other guys check those, those tags, but I, I circulate through them constantly. So if you're, if you're trying to get a hold of me specifically, that's the way to do it. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, you can also find us at facebook.com slash the cynical nerd. Uh, we post infrequently and are bad at that. And that's why we're going to have uh, Ron back there in Derek's frame, take over our social media presence um, to, to be, you know, the, the, the SM manager, the SMM, if you will. But you can also email us that old school form of communication, communicado uh, at questions at the cynical nerd dot com. Yeah. I, I check that every week and I'm depressed every week because all I have is Twitter telling me to check out people's tweets. I want to check out your question. That's all I want in life. I gotta be honest, man. Like we we have a pretty decent amount of people who who have been checking out the pod and I've talked to about it. None of you guys ever write us any questions. It's yeah. Are we are we so open about everything in our lives, including which silver haired foxes we would suck off at a glory hole that you feel like you have nothing to ask us? I, I have one um, comment though because I, I know I know Ron listens back to the podcast. I just want to say that when Derek got up to pee, I saw Ron in the background playing. Your posture while you're at your computer is incredible. Like there's you, you like does she? I, I yeah. I feel like I could never. I feel like I could never sit. That I'm always like hunched over. Hey Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, listeners, you can't see any of this. We're terrible. Yeah, they're just complimenting your posture. Yeah, yeah. you're being and not facetiously. Yeah, We're not yeah. being dickheads. No, no, genuinely. Yeah. yeah. No, that is good. Keep up the good yeah. work and posture. <laughs> Keep up the good posture and work. Leveling them druids. <laughs> she said, oh, "My yeah, okay. belly is preventing me from leaning All forward." Right, so I, I, just, I just gotta let people come at me, and then I won't be able to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's basically it. Me specifically. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Gr- Grouch Lo- co-op. <laughs> <laughs> Leveling mad druids. Okay, so two things in our main topic. For tonight, the first I'm gonna do WandaVision first because I just wanna I just wanna outro on that fucking movie that I watched last night called Psycho Gourmet that uh, Scott recommended and I I I, well, I bl- whatever I, bl- I blindly recommend it. Let's make that clear. Bl- blindly recommend it. Why? Well, yeah. I, I yeah. I'm not even gonna say things about the recommendation because it gives away concepts. So, uh, WandaVision episode three came out. We have uh, I'll give a quick recap. So we know she was pregnant at the end of the last episode. And surprise, that shit is like alien. It comes out in like 12 hours. They go from zero to 60 real quick. Uh, This kind of era is like the Brady Bunch, like the Partridge family. Uh, They do another great job of capturing that era of film uh, or TV. Sorry. Um, I personally liked the episode a lot. I think it did a good job of having, again, that like that time specific show um, feel while also kind of nudging the mystery along a little bit. It's still a little slow or a little slow burn on the mystery behind it, but they give just enough where you're like, hmm, okay, mm-hmm. something fucky's going on here. But before I get too deep in the weeds, God, how'd you feel about it? Uh, I don't know. This, I mean, <laughs> the first two episodes had me with the charm because it, it really kind of brought me back to like the Nick at Night days like we talked about. This one kind of just blew its whole load 
all over, all over in color, by the way, it, now in and, color and, Ooh. and in uh, Wanda, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, like the, the last t- 10 to 15 minutes, of the episode gives away exactly what's going on. Like there's, there's no, there's the, like, it, it just kind of pulls back the curtain really abruptly. And you, like, it's easy to figure out what's going on. Uh, and I don't know. It's, 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 it's going to get a lot darker. We're going to see the next, the next few episodes probably get really fucked up. Oh yeah. Um, but, but I would say so. I, I was told this is a six part season. No, nice. uh, is it? I actually, I actually don't know. I was on the impression I, it was eight, nine. but I was, told, I was told it's nine. Yeah. That's what I had read anyway. I, okay. Unless yeah, some, somebody told me the other correct. day that it was six episodes and I did not fact check it, but <laughs> I, <just wanted> to... <laughs> I did not fact check. No, it. no. Um, um, yeah, I mean the pa- the pacing is a little slow, but I feel like once once it takes off, it's going to be like so much all at once. You know what I mean? I feel like we're reaching that critical that critical point. Like what what is the the event, the event horizon, whatever the fuck's about to go down here. It is going to be uh, nine. It looks like yeah, and um, and I, so yeah, and I and I, I was hesitant to say a hundred percent definitively, but I recall the number because in an interview I remember someone saying like the show's kind of broken down into acts. I think it's like three episodes, three episodes. So I, I agree. I think next episode is going to bust open uh, a lot of info, especially given how this one ended. Yeah. Uh, but before I continue that conversation, Derek, how did you feel about this episode? Um, I, for uh, Overall, I liked it. Um, I do. I did have that same sense that I had with the first two um, where the creepy parts were like really creepy. Just stuff like Truman Show like that kind of like just cuts its way through me. And there's the part where Vision was like kind of starting to figure out something was weird. And then the scene just like resets and he like oh, goes dude. down a different like dialogue path. I was like, oh, man, that was good. Kind of fucked with me a little bit. But um, but in that same vein of having the same experience with the first two episodes, I was kind of like, all right, can something sort of like go down now? Like, can something happen? Yeah, um, there were a couple questions I had that were answered, but I don't know. I guess we're just doing general thoughts, so I won't hit that just yet, but overall, I liked it, but I'm ready for them to kind of, like, get on with it, you know? Yeah, get get to the point. Yeah. Right, right. Um, Yeah, so, I, I actually, I was watching this, of course, with my wife, and there was, um, you had mentioned, Derek, when we watched the first two episodes, that there was a couple, like, Truman Show-esque, like, creepy moments that made you kind of like, oh, and the first two didn't really hit me like that. Um, there was a couple things that felt weird or awkward to me. Nothing. I felt creepy, but this one, there were genuinely two moments that I was like, Oh, there's one where she looks into the baby's room and she's like, what? And she's alone in the house by herself. Mm-hmm. Remember there's, it just comes out of nowhere and she just looks and she's like somebody in there. Yeah. And, and, like, and the, the laugh the track fuck? is still going, but it's almost like, yeah. it's like invading a little bit. Yeah. It's, and I was like, ah, I don't like that at all. But it was really quick and short lived. It was just like a little bit of like, there's something under the surface here. Yeah. And we're going to show you what it is. Um, I. I think that I'm 100 percent right, by the way, <laughs> on my my theories about the show. I think that I think that this reality is 100 percent under her control, but that she was influenced to make it by an outside source. I'm still leaning towards Mephisto. I talked about him the first time we mm-hmm. talked about it, like the devil of the MCU, mostly because of Agnes. And uh, there's a, there's a character in the Agatha. comic books, Agatha. Yeah. No, uh, is it? A, what? So is she Agatha? I, th- so I, th- I think so. The witch, right? She's like, a, she's like one of the, Oh, you're talking about the Marvel inspiration for the, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So there's a, a character in Marvel who's a servant to Mephisto named Agatha. Mm. And everyone thinks that Agnes is based off or is her. Uh, but it looks like it looks like Wanda made this. Maybe she's having a mental break. Who knows? Maybe her mind was invaded much like she did to the Avengers and Ultron to make this world and to have kids. Clearly, the world was pushing her to have kids for some reason. We don't know why. But I also think so. And Sword is clearly there to try and break her out of it. Mm-hmm. Right. Because um, I'm forgetting her name. Uh, it's the, the little girl from Captain Marvel grown up. Uh, the black woman that comes over, that's her Monica Rambo. She's clearly, she looks for a moment of weakness when Wanda brings up her brother. She's like, I had a brother. He died. Pietro. Oh, good. Our role. Yeah, I never do this, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. I had, to, I had to break the whole train of thought by <laughs> complimenting myself. I almost pat myself on the back. Um, she, so Monica sees a moment of, of uh, emotional weakness there and tries to break through. And it was too soon. 
it was like you know there's no lube there you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta, you gotta play with it yeah, a little bit you, before you do yeah, that yeah lick it before you stick it now, have we learned exactly nothing? have we learned nothing from that, she, that song that played at every bar i was ever in for like 10 yeah. years straight yeah monica basically like you know she's wanda was like pietro and she goes She's like, oh, I'm just going to, hey, wasn't he killed by Ultron? And Wanda was like, hold the fuck up. Like, what? Yeah. What did yeah. you just say? And would not let it go. And for a split second, I'm like, wow, is Wanda legit the villain of this? Because she's not looking cool about any of this. You know what well, I mean? Wanda is 100% the villain. Whether And whether it's outside manipulation or, or not, like, Vision is dead. Like, he's gone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't he's dead. think he is. I don't think he is. She might, she, well, she, she can manipulate reality. So she literally could have brought him back but like i don't we don't know the rules right because she's right her, her reality altering her re, well the rules are going to be whatever the script calls for <laughs> let's be real but her reality bending rules have not been a part of the mcu so far we know she can do it i, I don't basically powerful as fuck mm -hmm. but like she's only manipulated objects like telekinetically so far yeah it, it seems like the, the, that, especially that scene with uh agatha and her husband like where he's like cutting through the the bricks he like yeah. you know he's like he clearly has never used a hedge trimmer before. And he's just like, no. oh, that was great. Yeah, he's just like terror, just terrified. Like they're all, they're all aware of of want, like something being off with Wanda and Vision. You know what I mean? Like they they all know, or at least Agatha knows that Wanda is the reason they're all there. You know what I mean? Right. You, you get the sense that like she knows what's going on, and she knows she maybe knows that Vision doesn't know what's going on and doesn't want to tell him. But I, right. And that's I, what that's why I think that Vision isn't dead, because if, if Vision. All right. When he's outside talking to them, and he's like, wait, what do you mean by that? Or whatever it was. We're going back a couple days now. I don't remember the exact dialogue, but and they're like, oh, no, don't tell him. Don't tell him if he was just some totally fake construct that Wanda like some True. direction. He just play along. Why would that? Yeah. Or they'd be like, fuck you. Like, who cares? Like, who are you? you you're not even real. Like, what does it matter what you know or don't know? Yeah. You're um, right. The thing is, they, they might not know whether he's real or not. Yeah. OK. Yeah, that's fair play. But I also feel like it's weird for the showrunners to make this decision to have Vision leave the house and not be in the presence of Wanda and to start this line of questioning, because why would this thing that doesn't exist like want to know? You know what I mean? Like I, that to me was. Well, was, I mean, you've, you've played Final Fantasy 10. <laughs> OK, yeah, fair play. I was actually going to go Vanilla Sky with uh, uh, what's his name yeah. at the end? Kurt Russell. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, that it, it is po it is possible that he is he is a sentient. He thinks uh, he's real, but he's not. I get. You. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but the other thing that that kind of like a question that was answered for me was, you know, because I was thinking, is this does this take place in a pocket universe in Wanda's mind? Well, I guess not, because she threw what's her name out of a very physical looking. Well, yeah, no, it's totally like I said, bending reality. This yeah. is she's it's a real town. She has put it like a basically a cover over. Yeah, it yeah. She, she said she moved in, and took over, and yeah, it, it looks like she's just living out the fantasy life that she's not going to be able to have ever. And the and again, like we talked about before, the only reference she has to like a normal happy household or the things she saw on television as a kid because she was raised. I mean, she was born in war. Her when you put it like that, it makes the show sound way cooler. Like I, I know I like the show, but like it makes it makes the show sound so much smarter. That, I mean, that's than, that's what it is, though. Like that's one hundred percent got to be what it is. If it's if it's not, how do you explain? I mean, like why else? No, you're uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, she, she, she was born into into a war tour. What was it? Sokovia. 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 Yeah. Her parents are dead. They get killed by a shell when she's you know like like eight years old. She says in in Age of Ultron, and her entire life since then she was raised and bred for war, so, and and was so filled with hate. And had such a weird, awkward childhood that she allowed Hydra to experiment on her and her brother. You know what I mean? Like she's she's never known normality. You know what I mean? She's never had a, yeah. a normal a normal upbringing or a normal family unit. So she's referencing all these different things. You know, and when, and when things start to break down in the 1950s era, she bumps things ahead. Every time, you know, every time it seems like uh, every time she gets another piece of the puzzle, like of her fantasy, like the which as soon as she was pregnant, everything went to color. You know what I mean? It's like it's yeah. like she's the it's like the more the more that she gets of this fantasy life she wants, the closer she starts drifting towards modern day and back towards reality. Right. I mean, first right. they were in black and white. Now they're in color and it's a set, but eventually it's going to get to a point where it's going to be like, you know, a fucking, I don't know, modern family or fucking, yeah. or, or, uh, or Roseanne or fucking, you know, six, six rules for dating my daughter. I'm dead. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> <that show> was. <laughs> it was, it was John Richter's show, right? Or was it, what was his name? 
I don't know. The, the, the one the thing point. that was really like uh, another thing I want to mention before I forget is that Reese Company. There was a a, a thing that was, was really that guy, yeah. fucking heart wrenching to me, and I don't know if you guys did. You guys watch Maniac? It was a limited series. No, All I right. saw the first few episodes, but I was I was dating a maniac at the time, so I never. Got right. All right, I, I probably can't make that comparison then. Um, so I'll just say this: the part where she's holding her kid and is like unknowingly humming a song from her childhood and talking about Sokovia. Uh, was kind of gut wrenching. It's like in this moment of like emotional, like a, a surge of emotion, she's almost forgetting that she's in this constructed reality and just like singing this song from her childhood. I think that's right when what's her name says like, didn't Pietro die? Didn't yeah. Ultron? And that like she goes like, wait a second, what the fuck did you just say? Like that sort of brings yeah. her out of it. Um, but that was a little gut wrenching. Uh, to have her like whatever it was, she was whistling a song or singing a song or something. But uh, yeah. Anyway, the question is, how, how aware do you think she is that this is all a dream for her or all, that's a, all that's a, such a hard thing to answer? Because she seems she seems to understand what's going on, um, but not all the time. It's like she gets lost in her own mm -hmm. her own spell almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? For lack of better words. And uh, it, it's hard to say. That's why I, I know there's an outside force. But uh, at the base of it, I also know that this is coming from her. Um. But before we, uh, you know, get too far away from it, so she has babies and she starts giving birth in this episode, and um, yeah, the whole pregnancy she, takes what ten hours? Not yeah, even? It was something yeah, like that. And that that doctor, what a fucking cunt, right? Yeah, what a dummy. <laughs> Go back to med school, use, you fucking use, idiot. <laughs> we use fruit for the women because it's simpler. <laughs> like Jesus Christ! Like I was like, oh, I know it's time appropriate because people just talk like assholes all the time back then, and women. But like, fuck back you. then, Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so Reddit is is where the insult army is breeding right now. <laughs> and by breeding, I mean jerking off into a jar full of My Little Pony action figures. Yeah, <laughs> into into a shoebox, actually. Uh, so there's that's, that's that's the cummy coffin right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's the cum box. So there, she has a baby, and I, we're watching it, and they're, they're like, oh, it's a boy. You know, there's a whole thing about Billy and Tommy, and, and then the, the one kid pops out, and I go, wait, there's another one. And my wife's like, how do you oh, know? Yeah, and I'm like, twins. just right. do you do you know who you married? There's another one. Just trust me. I fucking know that she has twins. Another one comes out, and I was like, yep, yeah, see, told you. So they get Billy and Tommy. How's that Billy working Tommy, out, telling your wife that you're right all the time? Is that, that going well for you? She, she, <laughs> they were like, shut up! <laughs> yeah, I know, I know no. what I'm talking about, bitch! <laughs> that sounded really shitty when you say it like that. I'm just no, fucking she, with you. Uh, she, she knows that I read too much about everything nerdy, so whenever I'm like, there's another one coming, she's like, okay, I believe, she just believes, she's like, yeah, okay, I trust you. You should, you should like, um, fuck with her and just make shit up. <laughs> that's true oh next week's episode i'll report yeah. back out yeah it's yeah. caused trust so, issues so we have billy and tommy billy and tommy confirmed are the children she has in the comic books just backstory for the listeners if you don't know uh billy and tommy grow up to be superheroes of course in their own right they are wiccan and speed respectively uh billy it, it, yeah wiccan's a weird name wiccan ends up he basically ends up being a mutant mage like his mother he has teleportation, all that kind of stuff. Uh, speed can, is can just he like make, his Can uncle. he conjure food and water for the, the dungeon runs? <laughs> yeah, he can. Okay. And uh, uh, he also, uh, well, I was going to make a Wicker Man <laughs> reference, and that's just not not even close. No. Uh, and the other one is named Speed, which you can obviously guess. He's a speedster just like his uncle, Quicksilver. Yeah, they really didn't um, uh, uh, break the bank on those. They named him Speed. No. Just the thing that he does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's you can infer we still don't know how they're going to handle it because I, I would I would bet any amount of money that there's no way in hell that they kill off kids in this show. Uh, but uh, we and we've talked about it before there. The reason people are excited about this in general is because this is how the MCU will 99 percent sure introduce mutants into the MCU mm. um, at the the reason the whole House of M storyline where she snaps all the mutants out of existence uh, and then ultimately brings them back and, and kind of reworks. And it was like their universe reset uh, is because she is reminded that she had kids and then they were taken from her by Mephisto um, and she loses her fucking mind and snaps all the mutants out of out of existence. Um those kids uh, are important because they later on down the line go on to form the Young Avengers and people like Cassie Lang are in that group. People like Kate Bishop as Hawkeye are in that group. 
Uh, and and we know that they're working towards that. There's going to be a Hawkeye series where he's training a bishop. So we're going to get Young Avengers uh, sometime in the next ten years. Yeah, exactly. We we you can form rough concepts of where the MCU is heading because of what the series is doing right now. So it's hard to say. Uh, I there's no way they kill kids off in the show. Um, what, what's going to happen is when like when the bubble finally comes down or when she realizes where she is and that there's a boundary, anything that manifests itself inside of this bubble won't exist outside of it. So Vision will be gone again. And her children will be gone. She'll, she'll have nothing. And that's what's going to probably drive her to be the villain of Multiverse of Madness. Mm. She's going to realize yeah, that everything she's had, that she, everything she ever wanted, isn't real. And, you know, we saw how, how, she, how well she dealt with Vision's death when she fought Thanos in, in Endgame. Or, you know what I mean? She's she's Because we, we, we think that Vision really is back, right? That's the running theory. Because she's reality bending. She's not, making, uh, she's not making mirages. So we think that she is actually creating Vision. But... The in the, so at least the way they do it in the comic books, she made the kids because she borrowed Mephisto's power without realizing it. He was influencing her. She borrowed his power. He took the power back and therefore took the kids and quote unquote killed them. Now the way the comic books fixed it because they're comic books is that the souls of Billy and Tommy were not dead. They were instead basically like like reborn into actual like other kids mm. who still grew up to be those people and. St- like, I don't know, you know, comic books, they do fucking really weird shit. But, um, you know, they still eventually get to grow up anyway. It's like having your cake and eating it, too. Like, she still loses her kids, but those kids still grow up anyway later on. And I think somehow realized they were her kids. Like, really weird shit. That's stupid. Yeah. That's yeah. Stupid. yeah it's, I, I have no idea how they're going to work the end of the show, but we have broad I just told strokes. You. I just told you. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. You did. We'll see. We'll see who wins. And also, I'll let you know what kind so, of lie I tell uh, my wife next week. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, like, if, if Vision really is back, then his death meant nothing. Then all the sad, like, you know, what none I mean? of their like, deaths if, if, meant anything. They came back. They literally snapped their fingers and they all came back. Well, none of their deaths meant anything. I mean, not Vision, not Black Widow, not Gamora. <laughs> oh, th- you said oh, Black Widow. Three of the people out of the 80 people that went. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, I'm just back saying, too, like you can. I mean, it's, Gamora, it's, it's a different. Gamora's back it's, with it's a, it's a what is Gamora. essentially memory loss. Yeah, like, come yeah. on. <laughs> All right. Well, at the end of the day, <laughs> that's basically what point, it is. Point, point, point being, if the only person who stays dead is is Robert Downey Jr., then like, like come on, like, come on. He's probably coming back too. <laughs> All right, uh, we have one more thing to talk about. Comic I, are dumb, I, huh? Cle- <laughs> Clearly, Nobody because of how die. much uh, theory crafting we just did, we're all still at least invested in what they do with this show. And and I, I am I am looking forward to the episodes. I wish they were a little longer, but I'm also kind of happy they aren't because we've seen time and time again. And even the like original Daredevil series was a good reminder. That show was fantastic. A lot of filler in the middle of that fucking show. It was 13 hours of episodes and it could have been like nine and it would have been fucking tight. It would have been tight. Been it could have just been 13 hour hours of that hallway fine. shot on repeat where he's fights yeah. his way down the hallway. <laughs> yeah. the, oh god, dude. I would I would watch I would watch a 12 hour video of that on YouTube just looped. I'll even take the second season's hallway fight with the chains. Some people were ever like, that's not as good. I agree, it's not as good, but it's still fucking great. Yeah, a tracking shot is way. a tracking shot. It's, it, it's, they're, yeah. they're just yeah. beautiful. The choreography sh- in that scene, like it's it's flawless too. It's it's insane. You gotta wonder yeah, how many times you- they did that before they got it perfect. If you show there are a lot of cool breakdowns on the Internet this is total off kilter, off base, off topic. That's what I was trying to get at. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of cool videos to show you, like that first hallway cut. They say it's one take, but it's not. And they show you the clever ways that they that, that's almost like, always the case with modern day tracking shots. Well, They're right, not right, right. Actual yeah, they'll shot. just <laughs> they'll just do the thing where they pan past a wall. And that couple frames of like bland basic wall is where yeah, they put, you know, yeah. stuff like that. It's not bad. And the, the, it doesn't matter because the composition of that shot is still fantastic. You're just ruining movie magic. Thing, uh, Chris. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you want right. to tell me that Santa Claus and Jesus aren't real, too? Speaking of Santa Claus and Jesus, the one person that is better than both of them combined is Psycho Goreman. Mm, mm. We have this gem of a film to talk about. Uh, shit. I don't know. Scott told us to watch this movie and I did. And I, so did I. Can, I, can I can I please can I can may I may I take the floor? Absolutely, Senator Sleeveless, take the floor. Okay. Uh, so Psycho Goreman, uh, is directed by Stephen Kostansky. Uh, this is this is a, a an indie film through and through. Obviously, from the practical effects to the cinematography, like it's all it's all done by like eight people, and you, and it shows. Uh, but the, but that was kind of the aim, right? It was it was it was just meant to be kind of a throwback to those 
early 90s, like, buddy, like, suburban commando style buddy comedies, but just with a horrendous creature and a ridiculous amount of, of poorly done but delightful practical effects. And it, I think, honestly, it kind of blends the two genres in a way that, like, it's bad, but it's bad. It's it's so it's so freaking good. This was is that is that the word? Frick? Friggin. Frig. Friggin. Friggin. So it's so friggin. it's so friggin good. I, I just uh, I could not. OK, so. Uh, uh, we've talked about it on the show before where none of us like child actors. And um, yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> the it's safe to say that the trend continues like to the ninth degree on this film. They are not good. Um, th- there are a couple funny like lines, but they're delivered so poorly that like I, you know, the whole frig thing, the song they make, by the way, the song was ten. terrible. Ten, terrible. 10 out of fucking 10. Yeah, that's what You're I was crazy. at. The group like, What's going on right now? What the fuck? <laughs> I love that song. I want to play it while I sleep. Uh, I will say so. Okay. Practical effects were actually kind of charming because obviously, they made them on a small budget. Yeah. I thought some of the designs were actually pretty cool yeah. uh, in that like kind of cheesy, bad B movie way. But they were yeah. like the dude that's literally a tank with like blood guns. That like, what are you even doing, bro? It's, it's it, just, it has Power dude, Rangers energy. spraying blood. <laughs> oh, you, fuck. You took <laughs> it. I didn't get there quick enough. And he took <laughs> sorry, it. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. Take it. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he, it's, it's hardcore Power Rangers energy. Yeah. Like the the 90s. The fucking monsters that were all foam, yeah, and silly looking, hundred percent Power Rangers monster energy. And then there's even a riff in the, like the beginning of the fucking movie that sounds a like Power like Rangers Power intro, Rangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, huh? My favorite thing you is guys ripped off hard. They kept doing it so many times, like they would show a fraction of the scene without the music playing. Like this is so fucking awkward without the music. Yeah. And then they drop the music back in. Like this is a movie that like knows what it is and it's making fun of the genres that is also like pulling off in a way like it, it's not a good movie like don't worry it's, it's a terrible movie but the things that it does it like everything it, i feel like it did everything that it did intentionally it, it absolutely to, did 100 it was supposed to it was supposed to have terrible child actors because most of those types of movies from the 90s had terrible child actors like n- not every movie was six cents you know what i mean like most of them were dog shit the power rangers even like those are grown adults who couldn't act the way out of a fucking paper bag like i think tommy don't talk bad about tommy Tom, i mean tommy has been doing circuits as the green ranger for 30 yeah, years no, now he's, yeah he's terrible go, yeah Tom. terrible person yeah, yeah yeah just you know just just do, do your Tybo <laughs> practice tapes whatever the fuck you were doing for a while there he, he had like Tybo lessons that you could like like watch like a four-hour vhs and learn how to be like fuck you no that, that thing and, and that he takes like on vhs tw- 12 years to get like a black belt in taekwondo <laughs> there's no fucking way for if you tell people that those lessons four hours at a time you cunt you're full of shit um, um the the backstory was so cheesy to like, yeah. but I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I loved the lore of like Gygax and shit. Yeah. Gygax it, Gary, also was absolutely a, a nod to Gary Gygax, creator of D and D. Um, I thought the backstory was incredible. I thought every every piece of this movie it was like equal parts, uh, Kung Fury, um, Karate Kid, and Freddy Krueger or, or Nightmare on Elm Street, and I thought that it knew exactly With what Power it was Rangers doing. Aesthetics. Yeah. I thought that it knew exactly what it was doing the entire time throughout. And even though it had like that B B <laughs> horror movie aspect to it, I think that there were some things it did masterfully. Like, I think that it's callback humor was fucking a one. Like when he looks at the thing, like I have no interest in hunky boys or do I? <laughs> oh, dude. And then later when, when <laughs> what's my her hunky name? Boys. Not <laughs> my hunky boys. Yeah, dude, that line. I was in fucking tears. <laughs> And, and uh, even when they're like eating uh, at the at the restaurant, and they're like, oh, being eaten is considered a warrior's death. And then the one yeah. guy, he's like, you fought bravely. I'll give you a warrior's death. And he's like, no, he's like, no. no. And he just like devours him and like yeah. vomiting blood afterwards. Like, I thought that kind of stuff was like really, really fucking clever, like really intelligent yeah. humor. Um, the people who wrote the film absolutely went to like script writing 101 like 100 yeah. percent. like the whole the whole crazy let's introduce crazy ball in the beginning and then do a really silly match at the end of the film yeah, yeah. like yeah 100 they were like introduce this thing and bring it back yeah. do that P- people will like it i, I thought it was <laughs> excellent i thought the fucking the, the the costumes were great it was a throwback to like yeah. uh special effects from my childhood so that was fun yeah. um yeah. but the music was great and I, I liked the child actors. I think it was intentional for them to be selling their lines in a dopey way. I I, I thought they were good. I mean, they served yeah. their purpose. What they were think back to, to Ernest do. Scared Stupid, Chris. You know, it's <laughs> I mean, like every, every child actor in a movie of like of this quality in the nineties, horrible. Yeah, 
And the dad I'll, was just perfect, man. The yeah, dad yeah, was, the dad just was my favorite character the entire time. <laughs> yes. Are we in unison? Yes. Favorite character was absolutely the dad. dad. The dad, 100%. He, a Psycho Goran was, was my favorite. His lines just fucking killed me. Like, just how extra he, he was all the time. And turning Alistair into that brain tentacle. Like, <laughs> yeah, for no reason. And he's the, just the laughing. scene at the end of the film <laughs> where, he's just, where eat, he's just eating dinner with his fucking parents, but he's not eating because he's just knocking yeah. all the salad off of the table. Oh, that his mom tentacles. with the weird half pixie cut, by the way, was the, yeah. the paladin, uh, by the way. I found that out oh, afterwards. Shit. Yeah. What were what not Paladin? What was her name? The Holy Warrior. That was her Templar. 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 That's Templar. it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, the some, this had like some of the practical effects were terrible, but like intentionally, yeah. like like you could see mouths inside of masks and things like that. Yeah. But there were a few things that it did that like that were like obviously sight gags that had me like cheering in my seat when I was watching it. Yeah. Excuse me. Like the very beginning when that one guy's like, "I don't want to die," he's like, "Then you will live forever." And you think yeah. he's gonna make him like his minion. But all he does is he puts him like in this in this constant like state Stasis of agony where, where his eyes are rolling back in his head, yeah. and like like to see like when I first saw that guy like the way that was done like that was a puppet obviously but like the way the way they had, the eyes were animated like stop motion so it had yeah. like that weird jittery like almost like thirty frames you know like that weird like it, it had like a creepy almost like claymation look to just the yeah. eyes and that was fucking awesome. And when he falls and he is completely claymations, like, thank you for like, yeah, killing thanks, him. Thanks, kid. Yeah. <laughs> they knock him over and he like explodes. That was fucking awesome. Uh, the weird, the weird animatronic robot, clearly the most annoying of, of his, uh, God, what were they called? His Paladins of Darkness or something? Paladins of Yeah, something like that. Pa- pal- yeah, Paladins of, of the Void or something like that. Uh, the, the weird like rogue robot with the, the metallic parrot on his shoulder. When he like shows him the, the dark, he's like, see the true darkness yeah. lies within. And yeah. then he's like, I see now. But then like a giant hand comes out and rips his entire face off. I was it's just eyeballs. Yeah, I was yeah. howling laughing like at, at some of the, the sight gags they did, man. Like it was and when he when he builds a sword, he doesn't have a sword to fight back against the, the Templar with. He, it's, yes! it's not he's even like, a sword at all. It's just fucking yeah, it's just like all it's like he pulls her spine out, she's still fighting. It's like so corny, so over the top, but like uh, it, it had it had big Devil May Cry energy at the end there, like big yeah. time. Oh, how about the scene I, I where like, the dad's taking a shit and the fucking face appears? <laughs> Find <laughs> me, <laughs> dude. The the comedy in that scene alone was some of my favorite in the whole movie. He's like, I, I don't know where to go. You down the street, take a left after the, the, the ravine movie. off of seven. He's like, ah. <laughs> I, I've never been there before. Yeah, dude, it was so good. But also, that, I, that poor fucking dad. Dude. Oh my god. I, like there's a they're fighting with the I don't know meat shank and the Templar sword and the Templar sword breaks and they show it after like they take away the glowing effect and it's clearly like a piece of PVC pipe that they spray yeah. painted blue on the inside and I was like yes yeah <laughs> it's so they didn't great. hide any of that that's what I liked about it that made it charming it's like they're just like yeah we put the shit together like we we did a low budget and it looks the way it looks if you like it great if not go fuck yourself I thought yeah. that that was really bold the council. The entire council, the space council, like the brain in a jar, yeah, and uh, the blue spaghetti, like all all, all yeah. these weird little things. It's like it's very like very D, uh, DIY, and I, I I loved it, man. Honestly, like especially so the, the post the post credit scene where he's like he's like, well, we got Plan B. He pulls out the gun. He's like. So who wants to kill themselves first? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just a regular revolver. It's not like a phaser gun or anything. Yeah. It's like an earth revolver. Like, okay. yeah, it's like, where the fuck did you get that from, bro? There's literally a dude who's a brain in a, a fishbowl and you're, you pull out a fucking revolver from yeah. earth. And the brain in the fishbowl like coily raises his hand, which is like yeah. very clearly a crow T robot. Like there's like a, yeah. there's like a wooden stick lifting the arm up. I, uh, th- there's a scene. I forget what exactly happens to cause the shock. Re- oh, it's when they, she the Templar teleports a human there to like see what we look like and then crushes her. Oh yeah. Like, and then smears her. I guess that's how she turns into looking like a human, clearly. And uh but the, when she smushes it, the brain in the jar looks over and the dumb puppet mouth just gapes open. And I was like, yeah. that looks so fucking bad. It's great. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> it just it just stays in that pose, like mouth again. You can just tell someone's hands like this. Yeah. <laughs> um I would say one thing that stood out to me about the uh, the script, which is that clearly you could tell that there was some form of redemption plot for uh, our dark friend here, Psycho Gorman. And at first I was like, no, don't do that. And I was like, don't fucking make him like, OK, I get it. It's love. What I liked about it ultimately was that while he's he 
softened enough to not murder them. He made them a promise that he would leave Earth alone, but he still totally teleported to like a, a small town in Utah at the end and, and was like, just, he just he started fucking up the Earth anyway. So like he was still a dude who just wants to kill everybody because they didn't actually like turn him into a good person that he. They're like, oh, look, the Templars not as great as you thought the Templars were. They're kind of enslaving people. That's bad, right? And I thought they were going to do the gray area where, like, he just doesn't know anything but pain. But no, he still just yeah. goes off to yeah. continue murdering people. But, but with he, he the didn't, power of love. He, he didn't <laughs> I don't, promise I don't need them this that, anymore. though. He, he, he just promised that he wouldn't kill their family. And the dad even says, like, why didn't you make him promise not to kill anyone oh, on right. Earth? And she was like, eh. <laughs> That's true. Oh, boys, I yeah. forgot. I, I have something for you guys. You have oh, something for us? It. Yeah, yeah. One might even say oh, hit me with your... Oh, no. Oh, God. You guys like that, you guys like that pussy Wait, where... paintbrush behind me? <laughs> where, where... Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, you like them no. nick lips right above your head, just quivering? <sighs> no, I don't like it. Listeners, uh, audio version only, spare yourself the... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh shit alright so uh, <laughs> any final thoughts on Psycho Gourmet because we're wrapping this bad boy up Derek it was fucking excellent I loved it I, I really was not expecting to and then I totally fell in love with it I'm actually going to buy it because I just want to watch it whenever I want to it was incredible oh, it's nice. It's, I mean it's on the Plex buddy no I, they, they deserve my money for that Okay. 100% Oh, That's another noble... thing, just so you guys know, in case you hadn't seen this in the trailer, it was like made from the co-creator of The Void. So I looked up a trailer for The Void. The Holy awesome. shit. That looks like a horrifying movie and I want to watch it now. That is not a joke. No, no. The, vo- the, void, the Void movie. is fucking. It, it's, a, it's a weird mix of like uh, Lovecraftian horror with. Uh, I don't, it it, it, it kind of has like the intensity of Hellraiser yeah. kind of going on. Yeah. Oh, shit. It looks yeah, it's, really, really it's, well done. It's it's awesome, man. That's a, that's so a you, fucked up movie. You've seen it already? Yeah, but I will watch maybe, it again anytime. Maybe Derek and I should watch it for, for next, next week. week. Let's do it. 100%. Okay. I, I'm watching it again. It's fucking great. Fuck yeah. High fives all around. Yeah. <laughs> all right, boys. Uh, Scott, do you have any final thoughts on Psycho Gourmet or anything else you wanted to talk about before we sign off here? No, I think, right. I think I'm good. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, we're running a little late. This episode is going to be up on Tuesday morning. Uh, that means the video version will be up the following day on Wednesday in the AM. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Once again, this is a cynical nerd. Mm-hmm. Uh, Derek, where can everybody find you at? Uh, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Dr. Gloom MD. That's D R G L O O M M D. Scott, how about you? Dance there, Chris. Yeah. Uh, D R G L O O M M D. You can find me at Swearwolf on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook Gaming. S W E A R. W O L F E. I couldn't dance to that I, one yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were doing, you were doing freeform jazz there. It was hard to like follow. Yeah. You. Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, you can. My name is Chris. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at TCN Plays. Lately, I've been doing nothing but streaming World of Warcraft, and uh, I'm not. I'm not apologizing for it. I started Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's fucking great so far. Game. I'm not that far into it, but it's really cool. And the combat. Uh, I didn't know this was a thing. Feels more brutal than the other games. Yeah. Uh, you're head stomping, folks. You're fucking Viking. You don't, you don't even give a shit. Um, not getting into that now, though. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, episode 17, and we'll see you next week. See ya. Yeah.